Welcome back to a Celtic State of Mind. I'm Paul John Dykes and today, for match day, I'm delighted to be joined by James McKenzie. We're going to do things a little bit different, James, because um, as well as the, the pre-match, which we are now doing, uh, we will just keep it live because this is the Charity Weekender. Axom are doing a charity drive today and tomorrow, 12 hours a day, and because we're playing hearts, we'll just do a watch along. So we'll be keeping it live all the way through the game, commenting and not commentating, just commenting on things that we observe and anything else that uh, our mind wanders to, uh, James, because that's what happens when you're watching the football, observations, etc. Uh, but also you can take a player, take their performance, talk about their season, perhaps, or even their future at Celtic. So far on the charity weekend, or we opened up this morning with James's uncle and my brother, have got a band. They're called uh, Celtic Cross Collective. And easy seeing you and I weren't invited into this musical um, quagmire. We weren't invited, were we? No, we weren't. Apparently not. They should know that I've got um, an A at higher music for playing the drums. I would have been perfect oh, in this band. but Exactly. I, I I have no, well. I've got no musical ability whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, the Celtic Cross Collective, uh, they premiered their EP this morning. It's a Henrik Larson EP. There was five songs. It's a bit baggy. It's a bit Brian Jonestown Massacre, Happy Mondays-esque, uh, Marky Smith, a wee bit of John Cooper Clark, all that stuff. Brilliant. Uh, really enjoyed it. That was followed up by our tribute to Shane McGowan. I was speaking again to Kevin Graham, who is probably a couple of tinnies down now, and Chaz Nuki burden the author, um, vegan animal rights um, kind of protester, uh, activist, if you like, and also a phenomenal author of literally about 40 books. Um, SM Media's uh, The Celtic Report joined us. Scott joined us at 9 o'clock, and then we had Michael Taggart, who comes from the Foundation Supporters Committee. Uh, Jim Warren, Des McLean told us all about Bender Lake Bertie. Then we had Yatao and Liam in Japanese. So thanks, everybody, every single one of you, for tuning in for that one. That was obviously aimed at our Japanese uh, Celtic fans out there, but it was intriguing to watch Liam sitting there, uh, James, just fluently talking about Celtic in Japanese. And then you heard them every so often talking about um, or, or making a comment about Rangers and saying it was like re talking about Rangers and Hearts and then giving the, the equivalence of Coke and Diet Coke. What else could he have been meaning? Um, calling Hearts the diet version of, of Rangers. I'm not so sure, but it sounded good in Japanese. Uh, and then Laura Bradburn, of course, thoughts on the hoops. That was good fun. Best team since 2000 without Henrik Larsson. They were trying to come up with the best 11. I'm just going to remind you what the best 11 was. According to Laura and I, it was uh, Fraser Foster in goals, Van Dijk, uh, Mialbe and Carter Vickers as a, a back three. Uh, we had Kieran Tierney, and uh, Jackie up and down the, the flanks with Lambert and Petrov in the middle. Um, then we had Nakamura playing as a number 10 with Sutton and Kyogo up top. What a team. Let me know if you agree with that. James, talk us through today's team. Today's team, I'm frantically trying to get it up. It's been a, I've a got very it. busy I've also, got Ian. I've also got Ian <laughs> here from New Zealand. Ian, how are you? Hi, mate. Hi, how's it going? It's going well. It's going well. I've been on since seven o'clock this morning um, and it's been good fun. We've had music. We've had a bit of Shane McGowan. We've had a bit of uh, Japanese. We've had everything. Everything. Yeah, That's I saw the great. highlights. Um, I had a, a, um, a bit of a, a nap before uh, before the appearance today, so I didn't see much of that, but I'll, I'll, I'll catch up later on today uh, online. Absolutely. Anybody who's missed any of the content who wants to get involved, uh, we are putting out 12 hours today, 12 hours tomorrow to raise money for Jamie Tierney. And today, we're not in any rush whatsoever because we are going to stay live throughout the game um, all the way through half time, all the way through the second half, and we're going to do the post-match. After that, I will play the Pierre, George and Collins um, interview, which will be on the YouTube channel, and then we'll do the live auction following that, just to wrap it up at 7 o'clock tonight, and then I'll have a wee break and chill out and do it all again tomorrow. But I must say, tomorrow... Um, just in case you're wondering before we get to the team, uh, very uh, much so I've been a part of today's, uh, tomorrow not as much. So we've got Celtic down undertaking the first slot, followed by uh, Celtic World, 
And then we've got Natasha Miko talking about the women's game. I might be joining Natasha for that one. Celtic Down Under, another two contributors will be on at 11 o'clock, followed by the huddle breakdown with Alan Morrison, um, Duco James, and uh, also uh, Ender Cole. Uh, we've got the Celtic Supporters Podcast coming on after that. The State of Scottish Football and the return of Colin Watt to Axon, uh, followed by the Celtic Way and the return of Tony Haggerty. And then the Green Sunrise Podcast, Come On The Hoops, the Celtic Exchange and the Unrestricted View. So I might pop in here and there if they're struggling for a co-host after a celebratory win this evening. But tomorrow is going to be a full day as well. It's great to see the, the Celtic podcast all pulling together, Ian. It is, yeah, yeah. It, like, you know, we you sort of we, we make remarks about it, you know, being it's like international and, it, and global when I, when I join and, and when, when Liam Carrigan does and things like that. Um, Kevin as well, you know, in, over in Budapest. We are global, um, and it's nice to sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's for good causes as well, but to to uh, to all come together, you know, and just have the bits and pieces and just come in, come in as one, um, hopefully as the team will. No, you're, you're, it's a great point you make, because the vast majority of us are based uh, in and around Scotland, uh, various areas of Scotland, but we've got Brian down in Swindon, Alan Morrison down in Sheffield, and then further afield, John Hughes over on Ireland, and then yourself, New Zealand, uh, Liam in Japan, uh, we've got a couple of the guys in Australia and we've got Kevin, of course, in uh, Hungary. So, yeah, we're international and continental. Here we go, start 11, Celtic versus Hart, Joe Hart in goals. Alistair Johnson at right back with Greg Taylor at left back and the central defensive partnership is Cameron Carter-Vickers and Liam Scales. In the midfield, Callum McGregor, captain, of course, Matt O'Reilly, David Turnbull makes a return. There's a talking point. And then up top, Mikey Johnson, Louis Palma and Kyogo. I mean, Awata obviously had won the jersey and he got injured the other night. That's why Turnbull is in. On the bench, we've got Scott Bain O. Quan. My God. <laughs> Quan is on the bench. Burnaby. He is. He is actually a, a thing. Uh, Burnaby Bernardo Maeda back in the uh, squads. We've got Forrest Ralston and Welsh as well. Uh, what's your overview? What's your thoughts on the on the team lineup straight off the bat, James? Yeah, it should be a solid enough team to get the victory. You think it's one of the strongest teams, if not the strongest team, when Rodgers can field right now with everybody available. But the main thing that stands out to me is Dyes Maida on the bench. I mean, he's back, and you could tell from games over the last few weeks, you think about the game against St. Johnson, you think about the game last weekend against Kamarnock where you could you could use a bit more energy when the games get to the latter stages to help to help out the defensive effort and it feels like the team's really lacked that. So having Dyson and Maida back of the bench is it's really good to see. And uh, uh, David Turnbull back in the team, I kind of suspected David Turnbull would find a place back in the team. I would have liked to see young Mitchell Frame stay in the squad for in some sort of aspect, whether that be in the bench or not, I thought he impressed as much as he could in a five-minute cameo. And I thought they looked really good against a tough opposition. So I would like to see him in the round the squad. I'm surprised Mikey Johnson's kept his place as well. When I did my team predictions, I had James Forrest starting at right wing, I think. But Mikey Johnson keeps his place. Brendan Rodgers is trusting him, but we're seeing Dyson Maida back on that bench. And I'm sure he'll be taking that place very soon. No, that that's the thing, uh, and we've got to take it into account. We have had kind of like two batches of uh, problematic uh, games, groups of games, Ian, where we've not had the, the personnel. At the beginning of the season, it was his central defensive area. We've had issues with Hatati and now Iwata being injured in that area of the park. We've had the wingers, um, you know, arguably the, the first picks being Maeda and Lila Bada. They've been out for large chunks of the season. Um, and when we're talking about the stop-start nature of the the campaign, the inconsistencies, that kind of thing, a big part of that is down to the injuries. We've got to be fair, haven't we? Of course we have, yeah. Um, but we, sh we should have a big enough squad. We have got a big enough squad um, to sort of cope with these with these problems. You know, it's, we can't, you know, we look at the budgets of, of, of the Kilmarnock, so even the hearts of this league. They haven't got the resources that we can call upon, you know. Um, so we should have we should have the strength and depth to to have coped. We have coped, you know, but maybe perhaps a little bit better at, at certain junctures. Um, 
So, but yeah, I mean, they're big misses. They would have been, they would have been first team starters. So, um, you know, it's uh, certainly in the Champions League. I wonder, I wonder if we would have had any more points had Leila Bada been playing, for example. You know, and when it, 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 in certain in certain games. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's not giving Brendan a chance to get that get that kind of um, that, that starting lineup that we can all predict uh, that that sort of goes in every week. He's had to chop and change largely for, for most games. To be honest, um, David Turnbull coming in today as well. I'm surprised that um, Bernabe, um, um, Bernardo, sorry, didn't get a look in because I thought he played pretty well the other night when he came on. So um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's it's it's, it's when, when is uh, when when are the when is um, about a back? Do we know? Didn't he say it would have been the the new year? I think the last thing he was asked, James. Yeah. I mean, th- this is a thing again. Listen, people might be saying that I'm picking holes and I'm looking for things to moan about. You want to know as a fan, you want to know when people are back, but what you're also doing is you are giving that information to the opposition, aren't you? And I think we've been very specific with the returning players, and it is something that Ange was always a bit coy about. I remember going to the um, remember the European game, James, where we've turned up McGregor and Kyogo started, and we never knew their status. They just came right back into the team. I'm trying to remember who it was we were playing that night. And, it was uh, Asgate. No, it was, was it Bayer Leverkusen? The first at, war, at home. It was game. at home. Yeah, and, and we've thrown them in. And I remember Kyogo coming in, out from the cold. He had a one-on-one that night. And you thought, you know, maybe if he was 100% match sharp. But the, the way that Ange did that, it gave no margin um, to the opposition. Often I think, by the way, you can tell us who's fit all you want. I couldn't have predicted this team and the bench anyway, but there you go, um, particularly the bench, because th- this is an interesting point, right? So um, Iwata goes out, he drops out. Home isn't in, James. We don't really know his status because there has been a couple of occasions where players have just disappeared and he has disappeared from this, um, as has Lagerbjelk. And uh, as uh, Stephen Sloan says, um Quan and Bernabe are in, Phillips is out. So the rumour about the clause in his contract isn't true. It makes you wonder, um, was uh, was Brendan Rodgers just looking at that Phillips, James, and thinking, well, he's got, and we've heard it time and time again, he does have Champions League experience. I would rather he was on the bench than X, Y or Z. Lagerbjelk comes in from the cold, scores that goal, beautifully crafted goal. And, and by the way, I've pointed out already today, Mikey Johnson, the secondary assist. It was a very good ball. He was asking a lot of Matt O'Reilly. Matt O'Reilly done so well to bring it down. Um, but, you know, he's a hero. How, how, I mean, coming into this game, how, how does that make Lagerbjerg feel? Nat Phillips, there's a sense of inevitability. He's an emergency loan up until January. No guarantees. Hasn't really played because scales has came before. You go back to Liverpool, we wish you all the best. Lagerbjerg's our player. Three million quid. And he does that the other night, James, and he's out. He's not even on the bench. I mean, unless there's an injury, that's a bit of a concern. Or is it just feeding into the the rumours we've been hearing from Stephen McGowan? He's on his way. Yeah, I think Stephen McGowan seems to be right. I mean, we're seeing evidence of him being right. There is a week's go by. He's not been in squads. He's brought on as sort of a last just a last ditch substitution to try and to try and do something because we needed we needed a goal. We needed some a swing and. It was him who popped up at the back post, brilliant header as well. But I don't think he's really been like that bad since he's joined Celtic. It's a really strange situation because I've never been watching him and been thinking, I'm not really too sure on this guy. He's looked solid enough. He's looked composed enough. I think he's really good in the air. Um, has Ammon Scales' performance at Ibrox. It was a really gutsy display, displayed the mentality that you need to be a Celtic player. That's the sort of games that you need to stand up and show yourself in, and he was doing that. So I thought he was, he's been solid enough, and it's really surprising that he's not in the squad, even if we try and move him on in January. I'm not too sure the situation is with Navrocki either. We've not seen him for ages in our Celtic shirt. It's, we know he picked up that injury early on in his Celtic career, and we've just not really seen him since. So you've got to wonder what was the thought behind signing these players in the summer? You, you do start thinking that, um, and then you start to look deeply into that and say, is there, a, is there a disconnect between the gaffer and the recruitment team? Because that's not being negative, and that's just taking all, as Stephen Sloan says, you take all the evidence that's available to you, and then you come to the conclusion 
that you know he's no he's no fancied. If he's no fancied, then has Brendan Rodgers rubber stamped the Lager Belt deal? I mean, after the other night, Wednesday night, we were talking about momentum, unity, giving us a bounce, giving us that result, monkey off your back, all these different things. It was all very positive. And then Lager Belt disappears. And you, you start questioning why. You really do. Yes. Uh, so, someone is going to have egg on their face with this if he, if he does get sold. Um, I mean, what it's going to do at a player's conference? Obviously, if we're, if we're listening to offers and it's done, isn't it? It's, there's no going back. It's not. It's not a suggestion of a loan that he's going out for. Um, and uh, incidentally, thanks very much for uh, hopefully getting the, the best yield we can get by scoring the Champions League the other night. You know, that's what he was sent on to do. You know, to put himself in the shot window. Um, but there's disconnect for for sure. If um, if that's the case, um, Brennan. Came out and said, you know, quite categorically that you know he had final say on transfers. So it would suggest that he's been given a bit of a scouting report and given it the thumbs up. You know, he's maybe watched some videos. Or maybe not even done that. I don't know. But final say technically. But I think this has possibly shown up some some vital flaws in the in the setup. So I can conclude that it's only probably better for the long run. You know, hopefully those gaps and then they've been exposed. There's not been too much damage done on the pitch, really. You know, we're, we're still top of the league. We, we could have been further ahead, but we're still top, despite the fact that these, we've had these, so these these issues that have been uncovered. So it remains to be seen whether, you know, we, we have we had that question before about nepotism and things. Um, so, you know, does it mean that someone's going to change roles? Um, does it mean that there'll be a big head-to-head, you know, a, a big discussion and a meeting of minds behind closed doors, or has it already happened? And there's a new strategy in place. I don't know, but there's certainly been gaps that have been exposed. So, and Lagabiel, because you can have a, a final example on that. You know, the amount of money that was outlaid and the amount of games he's played. Um, and yeah, r- rather than just coming out and actually sort of saying he's a dud and I didn't sign him, he's done pretty much everything else, hasn't he, the manager? So um, it's a it's it's a pretty um, it's a pretty damning um, indictment, really. Uh, it is, and, and I don't see it as being negative. We're trying to figure out what the uh, internal relationship is like between the gaffer and the recruitment team. That's all. It's one of the biggest parts of um, the success of a football club is the quality of your recruitment. And I think a lot of people have been a wee bit concerned. And then he comes back into the side and scores a goal and gets dropped. He comes back into the side, James, to give Patrick McGilp um, his first taste of Champions League victory at home in the 10 years that he's been a season ticket. And um, your man, uh, Kaiser, welcome to the show. Kaiser, good to see you, my friend. Uh, you're pointing out that I've probably um, got it wrong, and it was AJ. Was it AJ that played the ball into O'Reilly? James, can you confirm? I don't I don't think Mikey Johnson was on the park when that goal went. I think James Forrest had come on from already. There you go, then. So it was AJ. So I've tried to give him an assist, and you're, you're being so negative that you're taking it off the boy. It's a bit unfair. And the <laughs> same thing happened in Perth. I was trying to give Mikey Johnston the assist and it oh, I thought that was water. Right. <laughs> Kaiser, I'm just trying to help the boy out. Try to give him a couple of assists. Right, AJ, great pass, AJ. Phenomenal pass. Um, the secondary assist, there you go. Right, thanks very much for that. Um, yeah, what I would say about Langerbell, because there were some comments made yesterday by John Kennedy about the defence. Obviously, all of a sudden, we had no defenders. And then when everybody comes back and they're fit, we end up with too many. And he was talking about a couple leaving the club. Um, we know, or we think we know, that, that Nat Phillips will uh, end his loan deal and go back to Liverpool. You're then looking at uh, Kobayashi, who's so far out the picture, he's going to leave, right? And then you're looking at that lineup just now. So you've got Scales and Carter Vickers at the moment, first two on merit, first two picks. You've got Welsh, and you don't have Novroski, but with the, the money we've spent for him and the fact that he's not really played you would maybe think Novroski is going to be your fourth. James, would you run with that? And if that's the case, it's going to be Kobayashi, Phillips and Lagerbjelk out the building. Do you think that's fair, looking at the situation today? Yeah, I think I, I raised this issue. I can't remember if it was on the blog or on the actual podcast a few months ago, just with regards to Celtic centre-back situation and what the rise of Liam Skills is done the collateral damage that that's caused to the rest of the centre-backs at the club because it was so unprecedented that came only because of an injury crisis, really. He wouldn't have got that opportunity to step into the Celtic team had it not been for 
a mass amount of injuries that we've not seen for a good while. Yeah. So but he's really ran with that opportunity and it means that the likes of your Lager Bielka or even Nat Phillips may have not had as much game time as they thought they would have Nat Phillips would have come into the club thinking that he's going to be starting every week for maybe two months before the centre backs come back. And that would have been his job. But Liam Scales in the form that he showed in the first few months of the season is really sort of to kill the chance of those guys getting game time. If you're looking at the options that the club now, it's got to be Carter Vickers and Scales that are starting. I'm a big fan of Stephen Welsh. I think he's a really good player. And he's got a part to play at Celtic, I think, over the next few years. So you'd definitely be looking to have Stephen Welsh in the picture. And then I guess that makes Mike Nafrowski the fourth choice, as you mentioned. You spent €5 million Euros on him. That's too much to give up on him after six months and people have been making the argument you haven't seen Lager Bielke that often in a Celtic shirt since he signed. You've seen Mike Navrowski far less than you've seen Lager Bielke and that's been because of the injury picked up. He looked to be getting on a good run of form when he first joined the club but that injury completely killed his momentum with Cameron Carter-Vickers getting injured. He could have had a consistent run of games over the next few months if he didn't get that injury at the time he got it. I think if you look at the four centre backs you've mentioned, those guys are probably going to be your sort of main guys going forward. And anybody else is, is out of the picture, really. I think Kobayashi will probably be off back to Japan. And I wouldn't be surprised if you get a loan back to Sweden for Lagerbjelka because he was named, I think it was Swedish Defender of the Year for last season. So he was clearly rated highly by the media and other clubs in his home nation. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes back there. No, he's definitely high related, uh, high, highly rated. Um, I think the, the biggest shock yesterday from that report from Steve McGowan, and we don't comment on every player report, uh, James, it gets to the point where you could do full shows on players that are linked to Celtic, particularly at this time of the year. Um, but when Stephen McGowan talks about a, a link, <clears throat> I tend to think, well, th- there's some credibility in it, right? Uh, but he was talking about a, a permanent move. For Lagerbjerg. So, yeah, we'll wait and see what happens with that one. Uh, we obviously are aware of the team that's lined up today. Um, and we're looking into the, the midfield next with, with regards to that jersey that's been passed about really since Hatati got injured. The guy who started the season off, though, uh, Ian, was David Turnbull. And I keep saying this regarding Turnbull. We had a discussion earlier on when uh, I was chatting to the Celtic report, I was chatting to Scott, and it was about this. Um, you know, no turning your nose up about you know about the best Scottish talent, but why don't we sign them? And one of the one of the uh, reasons that I was given by Scott was um, sometimes the Scottish clubs will appreciate the market, and I think Scott McKenna was an example of that. Celtic apparently were interested in him when he was at Aberdeen. There was no way we were going to pay the money they wanted. Um, you then look at the scenario at the moment with Miofsky. Um, yeah, if we're interested in him, I can see why. But for four and a half million to make the guy. A record signing between two Scottish clubs. Is he that good? Ian, what do you reckon? Well, I haven't seen enough of him really to, to, to be able to say that. In the current market, I mean, it's, you know, look at, I think, the, don't, don't the German, the, the Germans have a sort of phrase, call it the stupid English money or something, you know, but it's been inflated and distorted the transfer market beyond belief, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And that has a you know it cascades down to it has to us you know ultimately if if, if that's the kind of chat really um, in the grand scheme of things is four and a half million pounds a lot of money not in today's market if you compare it to to our English cousins but I don't know I have I, I, the honest answer is I don't know I, I haven't seen enough of them I don't I don't watch really watch Aberdeen just sort of on highlights and sports scene and things like that, that I've seen him. He looks a decent player. Um, I know Kevin was saying that he was he, he, he was decent when he was in Hungary. Um, for that price, I don't know. But when, then again, you look at John again. We haggled over a few hundred grand for him, you know, and 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 he was a, a classic example of what Luke could have been. You know, um, he's pulling up trees down in, in, in England, and he could even end up winning the, the, the Premier League with this season with, with Aston Villa. Um, but if not, I can see him going. To one of the sort of the, the top tier clubs before the end of his career, um, I like think he's been consistent year on year. Um, so that's that's an example of you know what, what could have been McKenna. By all accounts, he's been frozen out now the, the picture, but he was doing all right for us for a little bit. Um, would he have improved our team? Um, 
possibly for that money. I don't know. But we've wasted. We keep keep talking about, you know, and I keep saying, using the phrase money ball, which it firmly is. We could have afforded these players, and and, and I think they would have been. I would rather have spent a bit more money on McKenna and um, McGinn than all this speculative, you know, money ball approach to, to players that we've never seen. You know, it's just a it's just a waste of money. You know, and I, and I, I said it earlier on in a, a previous podcast. I, I I wonder if it wasn't Mark Lawwell, would would people still be in jobs? You know, because if they hadn't had the the success of the bigger sales. It would have been the more, a terrible record, a terrible record, you know, really, in terms of the amount of money it's spent versus brought in. So if you take away a couple of those bigger sales, it's it's not good enough, really. So um, if he's if he's if he's guaranteeing goals, I'd say yeah, I'd say four and a half million. Go go for it, you know. It's it's always a punt, but um, yeah, I, I don't know whether it's on our part as well, you know, because Aberdeen are in the same league as us. They're like classed as a wee sibling, so you don't want to be seen to be like, you know, um, given into to one of your lesser siblings or your, or your younger siblings. Um, whether there's a bit of snobbery from our side as well, I don't know. But if he's going to score goals, um, four and a half million, if that's what what it takes, you know, we'll only waste it somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the thing, right? And, and for anyone who's wondering why we keep going on about recruitment, it, it, there is a knock-on effect. So, you, so let's say you had four or five bad ones. Um, th- there's going to be a whole department and there's going to be pressure from the heads of that department to prove that they're doing it right and sometimes proving that you're doing it right is by selling a player and saying, look at the profit made on this one. So obviously the one on the top of everybody's list is going to be Matt O'Reilly. I don't want to lose him. I think it would be absolutely dreadful if we lost that player. But the, the screws start to turn in every department in a, in a club like Celtic whereby that department's now going to be under pressure because the hit rate's been so bad in the most recent transfer window. So there is a knock-on effect. We don't want to see it happening. O'Reilly's been sensational this season. You've been singing his praises, James, and he just keeps doing it. I mean, that moment the other night was sensational. It was it was brilliant. The, the way that he pulled that ball down from one of the Johnsons um, and then, you know, flighted it in, it was a composure to, to be able to find the player as well. Just stay calm. You're composed. It's late in the game. You find your man. He made it an easy enough finish for him. Um, so O'Reilly, for me, has been our best player all season. Um, he's added goals to his games, uh, which has, uh, you know, it's got him into the, the international team. He'll be on the radar of X, Y and Z teams with a lot more money than Celtic. It worries me. Uh, we can't allow it to happen. Brendan Rodgers said at the beginning of the season, we couldn't afford to lose another quality player. I still think that's the case, James. That can't happen in January. Yeah, you can't afford to lose Matt O'Reilly. He's been one of the club's top players this season I don't mean to say I told you so but I'm sure if you look back at the earlier episodes of the show I don't mean to say it but I'm going to say it (laughs) yeah but I'm going to say it I don't mean to look you've got to look back in the summer and look at the episodes where Brendan Rodgers was first getting linked to the job and you'll see someone who was saying that Brendan Rodgers would raise the players game and he has done just that he's been absolutely phenomenal this season and I think you're seeing the clubs that are getting linked with him the likes of your Arsenal's your Manchester United's your Dortmund's and that speaks to the quality that he's shown this season. And the one thing that stands out for these bigger clubs, when they're looking at a team like Celtic to buy a player, they're not going to look at how he plays against Dundee. They're not going to look at how he plays against Motherwell. They're going to look at how he plays when you're up against an Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. That's the games where the quality really shines through. And those are the games where Matt really stood up. He stood up in the derby matches where we've needed the most mm-hmm. Champions League man of match against Atletico Madrid. Um, he's really shown that he's one of the club's higher caliber players in these games where the stakes are raised. And there's a reason that all these big clubs are taking notice. And Celtic, they can't afford to lose. I'm not sure what sort of price Celtic would deem um, a good price for Mara. Would it be 30 million? I think the talk was that, they're, that it's going to require a record-breaking fee to sign Mara, really. So I think 30 million pounds next summer, that could be that could be the way it's going. 25 gets you in the room to discuss it. 25 million gets you in the room to discuss it. Now, I don't want him to leave. I want to absolutely underline that. I'm just looking at the stand of loving again, guys. And, and I think I wanted to see this ruthlessness coming in from uh, Brendan Rogers. Thought I'd seen a wee bit of it in the St. Johnson game. Um, and then in some of the pressers since then, he's appeared a bit passive. Is he bringing in guys like uh, Quan and Burnaby 
almost like, right, I'm going to check you out because if you don't show me what I need to see on a match day, then I'll ship you out in January. We're talking about trimming the squad, Ian. Quan is a surprise inclusion here. Um, Hearts, you know, in terms of they're, they're not a team that's sitting bottom of the league and you're expecting to win four or five now. We're going to have to be at the top of the game to get this this job done today. And Quan's on the bench. I find it quite unusual. Burnaby's on the bench when, you know, Mitchell Frame maybe could be on the bench. Is he going to be ruthless? Is he going to throw these guys in? Maybe give them some minutes, make a decision on them, be ruthless, move them on if necessary. He has to, doesn't he? And I think, you know, obviously he's saying, you know, it's like if you perform well in training, you get a chance. If he, if he says that and then you've got players that are, that, that, that are trying hard, and training and then they don't get a chance it's disheartening um so i think you know it, it could be one of two it could be you know right i'm just going to underline you know lag will be out right it's it's you know i fair enough he scored the other night but you know he's 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 had his chances and he's not part of my plans same for for, for bernabe now it might be the same and corn i don't know um well maybe maybe they, they've they've seen lag will be out score the other night they've seen you know the, the route that Liam Scales has taken, and it's provided a, a source of inspiration in some somewhat. You know, and they're they're they're, um, they're working, they're, they're, nail, they're knuckling down and, and working hard in training, so they've been given a chance, as the gaffer said he was going to do it, because it's 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 possible. You know, it is. It's not. It's not. It's not. Um, it's not a fanciful, you know, scenario really. You know, Liam Scales has come with the most recent. He's come in and done it. Um. You know, from from nowhere, he's come in and he's made himself a mainstay. So um, they wouldn't be at the club. You'd like to think, you'd like to think they wouldn't be at the club if they didn't have something about them. Um, you know, unless they were signed and, uh, and, and not really sort of looked at. But um, who knows? It could be Corn. <laughs> Imagine Corn coming in and and, uh, and being like the next fine. You know, we sell him for thirty million. We can keep O'Reilly. Um, you know, know. And the, the O'Reilly question is well. That's another thing. It's just, because the, because the level of the, the conveyor belt is not there, we'll sell him and then we'll never replace him. You know, we'll spend a, a fraction of the of the money we get for him, and it'll be for another dud probably. You know, mm-hmm. so you uh, you kind of like if the, if the the model's supposed to work where you know we've already got and it worked with with Alistair Johnson, didn't it? You know, when when Juranovic went yeah. and Alistair Johnson came in, that's how it should work. And it seemed like it was kind of getting to that point with Ange. You know, was that Ange's recruitment or was that the, the recruitment team? I think the recruitment team would probably try to take the credit for it, but maybe it was a bit of both, or maybe that was luck. But it's 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 largely more luck, better luck than judgment. I think when we have these 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 situations, generally, if we get rid of someone, if we, if we let somebody go, so we, we, we've weakened the team. You know, Here's so we, the can thing. Never, we can never build. So that's why we're getting humped in Europe all the time because. We haven't got that nucleus of a, of a of a team that's been together for a while and learned and, and taking the knocks. You need um, the cycle. You need that cycle constantly. And and if you have a bad transfer window, it, it actually there's a missing section when that cycle comes round. And that missing section is two or three players that should be first team starters. And if the yeah. signing policy two or three windows back it hasn't been good enough, you're missing that link. And that's what it comes down to. And it needs to be. It is. We've used this term all season. We're going to ban it like it being a roller coaster. It's fine margins, <laughs> right? And by the way, I, I think that the uh, the headline writers, the clickbait writers, would probably say that I am about to compare Quan to Wanyama, but I'm not, right? Um, I had a, a chat with, going back to something you said here, I had a chat with Chal McGrew at one of our live events, and he said that the first time he's seen, first couple of times he's seen Wanyama at training, he didn't think he was a footballer. He was that bad. And you know what happened. He turned out no so bad. But I'm not going to say that's happening. I've not seen enough of Quan. Like everybody else, I've seen him in a friendly game against there. The footage is on uh, YouTube. I've seen him in the testimonial against um, Atletico Bilbao, I think, uh, as well. So, yeah, that's all I've seen of the guy. If he comes on and plays well, great. I'm always going to support everybody in the hoops. Uh, the action is underway. We're going to stay live. We're going to stay live. And because we're going to be on for a total of about three hours, we might uh, disappear from time to time, one of us, two of us, just to go for a sandwich or a cup of tea or something like that. But we're going to stay with you. We're not going to commentate on the game, but we are going to watch the game. We're going to comment on the game um, as well, all the way through as a watch along for the charity weekender. Um, so, James, have you got your eye on the action? Not yet. I've not got the game and I've still been... You've, just been, you've just been absolutely engrossed. I- 
and I mean, actually, okay if, I, if I drop off a five minutes and just check my, my, my uh, of course. game off and I can watch it, I'll just start I'll back and in. All the way from New Zealand, absolutely, yes. No problem at all, Ian. And uh, James and I will hold the fort in the meantime. And obviously, with regards to a game like this um, as well, James, I, I was speaking a lot about momentum uh, in the Champions League. I knew that the, the competition was gone. It was beyond us. But uh, we're talking about points. We're talking about money. We're talking about coefficients. Uh, all that kind of stuff. I was also talking about momentum because you win that game the other night and you go in with a completely different bounce to this game here domestically against Hearts. Um, and I think that was one of the key issues the other night there. If we had, if we had gone in here after a defeat, that's a different conversation we've just had there, James. Yeah, you've, we had to get the victory against Fiona just for for the, the, the sake of the players. I mean and for the manager and for the supporters. It's been, what, 16 games since Celtic, since Celtic had last won a Champions League game. It was sort of a mental block, a mental hurdle that the team just couldn't seem to get over, even in these dead rubber games where nothing really is on the line. It seemed like the lack of pressure on the night against Feyenoord really helped Celtic. It benefited the team because there wasn't this weight on your shoulders of can't make any mistakes, that sort of thing. That was They were allowed to play a bit more freely. It was a lot less sort of laser-focused as what Champions League matches usually will be. So I think that really helped the players. And that that's not the team fully bounced back from the defeat to come out of class weekend yet. The fans will be looking for a response in the league. They'll be looking for a convincing, comprehensive performance today. And we'll see if they get that. Well, let's hope they do. Uh, and um, how's my sound at the moment, James? Is it all right? No interference on my sound? No, it sounds fine. I've just got my stream muted. So. But yeah, I just think that um, the conversations that we're having in relation to uh, some of the the concerns, um, they, they will continue because, you know, until they're resolved, then they're a talking point. And it's not being negative. It's just we're going into a January transfer window and we're going to be talking about recruitment. Of course we are. So uh, with regards to recruitment, I don't I don't see there being an issue talking about it. It's one of the biggest topics of discussion at this time of the year, James. Yeah, especially you'll see it in the media. It's all that's going to be swirling around transfer rumours, this, that and the next thing. It's, it's silly season. And we'll see what, what Celtic will get up to. You'd hope some first-team quality players will come in, but... I'd be shocked if that was to happen. If I'm going to be really honest, you don't usually see that sort of business from Celtic. We don't. You don't usually see us acting like that, especially in the last few years. Not the only sort of anomaly, the only outlier to that trend is Ange, and he brought them all in before the window had even started. Yeah, and the big thing with that is the the specialist knowledge of a um, a specific market at that time. Um, we can't forget that. You know what market does. Uh, Brendan Rodgers have a specific knowledge of, well, it's a very expensive market down south, isn't it? So if you're shopping in that market, there's no guarantees. Nat Phillips is the, the, the latest example of that as well. There's also a suggestion that um, if you want to try and uh, differentiate between who signed who, then there's a chance that Brendan Rodgers wanted Nat Phillips because, you know, that, that's, the, that's, that's basically the market he came from. So there's a chance that he would have known about the player. I know that their paths didn't cross specifically when they were at Liverpool, but they would have crossed an English football at some point. So it's not always the answer, is it? Just to go down south, chuck five million at a player, and it's going to work out. Yeah, you've seen over the last few years, it's there's been far more misses than hits with regards to signings from England. I mean, Scott Sinclair came up here and he absolutely strolled it. Scott Sinclair is an example of it working out, but then... You're looking at, as you mentioned, John Joe Kenny. You're looking at Shane Duffy. If you even want to go outside of Celtic, you can look at players like Joey Barton, who's in the headlines right now for all the wrong reasons. He mm -hmm. came up here expecting to stroll, and it didn't work. You've got guys like Shane Duffy. You could even maybe argue Nat Phillips, and you could call me reactionary off the back of that game against Kamara. But it's, it's a common misconception down south that they're going to come up here and they're going to absolutely stroll it. Scoot it, yeah, but I don't think it's the knee-jerk reaction. I think if you were to look at Nat Phillips over the period of time that he's been at the club, James, and you were to ask the old question, hit or a miss, because we talk about hit rates in the recruitment, right? Hit or a miss, he's a miss. He's a miss. 
you know, the, the only thing you would say is we needed an emergency uh, centre and half, and that's that. That's the only kind of plus point. We needed a body in the door. But, yeah, we ended up needing them for longer than we initially had planned to. We we brought them in just to plug that hole whilst Carter Vickers, Navrovsky, and everyone was out at the start of the season. But because injuries keep crawling up to the likes of um, Carter Vickers, and even I think Navrovsky picked up another one, you're seeing more of Nat Phillips, even in these later stages. He's That wasn't the task he was originally brought in to do, but he's still been brought in. I don't know if I could fully say it was a miss, though. It is just one bad game. I mean, the rest of his Celtic career was... It was nothing revolutionary. It was nothing incredible, but it, just it was just, just sort of prodding yeah. along. Yeah. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this, but uh, obviously uh, the Green Brigade are not in the stadium today either. That was confirmed yesterday, wasn't it, on the socials by the group. Uh, they have not resolved the issues that the club have with them. So they are still banned. Um 200-odd fans banned from watching Celtic home and away, domestically yeah, and in Europe. Muted, but if, if anybody in the audience can tell us how how the atmosphere is, if you're watching at home, please let us know. Yeah, it's again, it's one of the ones where, uh, you know, we, we keep using these fine margins. What you need to try and do is, is use every percentage to your advantage. Every stream of uh, positive energy, positive play um, to your advantage and one one of Celtic's biggest key advantages has always been a home support, a fortress stadium, building that uh, you know fear in the opposition when they come to Celtic, so that they think it's, it's going to be an issue. I mean, we're famed for it, James. So why why take that element out? You know why why remove that element when we need these victories? I, I spoke about momentum. I spoke about the. Uh, Final being a group of games followed by this Hearts game uh, with one eye on the game on the 30th, which is key because if nothing happens in terms of the um, points differential between Celtic and Rangers before before then, um, whoever wins that game potentially is then in control. So it's a momentum thing and part of that momentum, because you get momentum on the pitch from the, the terraces, nobody can convince me otherwise. And I'm not just saying Celtic fans are the only fans that can do it. Fans create a positive energy, don't they? they? They create a pressure on you as well as a footballer, uh, which stops any complacency from creeping in, which I think was key during the, the pandemic season. So the sooner we get that resolved, the, the better for for the club, for the team, for the performance yeah, of starting 11. It's certainly part of a shadow of what it usually is without the game again. There are no people going to disagree with me on that. It's a, it's a pretty touchy subject for some, but... Um, it's it's always a great atmosphere when they're there, I think. But, You're right when you say the team sometimes needs to call a moment on the crowd for momentum when the backs are against the wall. I think a perfect example of that is when Celtic beat Rangers 3-1 in Ange's first derby victory. As Celtic manager, Celtic's performance was electrifying, but so was the atmosphere inside Celtic Park as well. It was a... Uh, that, that's was, a particular game. And every single goal went in. That game that you're referring to, the 3-0 game, is one of the reasons that a lot of Celtic fans aren't, one of the reasons, aren't that fussed about having no opposition fans at the at the fixture. Because it was one of the best atmospheres, Jim Orr talks about it, one of the best atmospheres I've ever experienced at Celtic Park. It was yeah. just exclusively Celtic fans. It was, it was an incredible night. I think it was a bit of relief that night as well because Celtic fans for about a year and a half hadn't really had much to cheer about. It was you can't go to the football, the team's not playing well, you're you're sort of locked in your house and it it would be pretty frustrating. So it would have been a great night for Celtic Celtic supporters. So yeah, in terms of the actual atmosphere, um it's definitely going to be affected negatively by the Green Brigade not being there. A lot of people, when you start talking about it, James, what I've noticed is they become defensive and say, oh, well, you know, Celtic existed and the atmosphere existed before them, it will exist after them. And whilst I accept that there's been famous European nights and amazing atmospheres at Celtic Park prior to the, the birth of the Green Brigade, in the here and now, they are vocal, 
Um, they are visual, and they're a massive loss. They're a massive loss when they're not there. I don't. I, I think it would be difficult to argue otherwise. I mean, do you think we've become too reliant on them? I, I'm, I'm just. Oh, Hearts have just scored. See, this is the issue for me when it I comes to it behind. Um, I'll see when it goes looking, out. Shank was just going. Looking at home game, aye, Shankland, another guy that uh, obviously has been linked to a move. I'm not going to say to Celtic because there's been no concrete links. Um, and I, I'm a guy that I wouldn't have him, and he's just scored against us. The, the, to be honest, it doesn't look. I think it's. It doesn't seem too hard to score against us <laughs> Just for set pieces. We're, we're so, so, uh, it's our Achilles heel. Um, or quick breaks, you know, it's, it's like, you know, the the, the, the the consolation goal that Hibs got the other week uh, when Motherwell went and scored and equalised. It, it, so easy. Just so, so, we're not making teams work. It's um, too easy to score against us, yeah. I mean, that is. And, and when you remove somebody like uh, Carter Vickers from the defence, when you remove him, um, we look absolutely ordinary. Even we'll just, when he's in there, we're too yeah. easy to score against. That's it, man. And one man, so he's only one man. And and I mean, Taylor had a, a good good effort before that. I don't know if you saw that. Um, mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I thought it looks like it's because the, the the past game, you know, the, the game against Kilmarnock and the draws that we've had. We've looked. We should have. We should. If we had. If we were more clinical, we 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 would have put those teams to bed, no problem. But we we didn't. And then and then obviously we we're, we're susceptible at the back and lose, lose these goals. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's defending a corner, Ian. It's it's in terms of defence, it's basics, isn't it? And we we keep failing. Um, yeah. we we keep failing that that challenge of uh, you know, it's a free header really at the back post. Yeah, free header at the back post. Yeah. yeah, I've just seen the goal. It's he's completely unmarked at the back post. There, it's yep. I think it's scales he breaks away from just the crowd in the box. So now we're under pressure again, you know, and it's like and, and Hearts will just they'll just dig in now, won't they? Um, You're right. We're under pressure now, and yeah, it's been a really and, slow start to the, yeah, to the first half right. as well. It's a pretty tepid start. They're going to need to turn the intensity up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, you're this, you're 100 percent right. I mean. The only thing that you can ever say there, if there's ever a benefit to losing a goal, a goal, is getting it getting it within that first 15 minutes because it allows you to regroup before half time, and we can still play the game without changing the game plan. If you know what I mean, uh, just yeah. a, a bad bit, of the, a really bad bit of defending, and now um, nice it's about taking ownership. Uh, Who's going to take ownership? Yeah. Um... I, yeah, so you're looking for someone like O'Reilly for that. Someone like McGregor. These are the sort of players that. I've been the ones that have stood up time and time again this season when Celtic have gone behind or they've needed a goal to do. They've needed someone to step up and drag them through the mud. So you'd expect one of them to really step up. I, and y y this is, again, um, when you're looking at the, the bench and we were talking about some of the lack of quality on the bench. Um, and, and one thing you need at all times is game changers, people you can actually turn to. I mean, And I know... We've got Maida on there. Uh, Maida can be a game changer or can give you a different dynamic and all the rest of it. These are the things that we're going to be talking about in, in, uh, in a half hour from now if things don't change because Hearts can have their two blocks of defence uh, between us and the goal. And then, and then as easy as we are to defend against Ian, we're quite easy to to defend on the other side. Of the, uh, sorry, attack against. We're, we're as easy to defend against. I mean, we can... Uh, Teams will look at us and think, right, seeing a corner kick, there's a great chance we're going to score. How many times do you think we're going to score from a corner kick? We just don't have the, the fear factor, do we? We don't. We don't. Um, and these are these are things... I watched a thing, uh, I, 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 um, an interview with Graham, um, Gordon Strachan the other day, and he kind of touched upon, I think it was Peter Martin, um, just one of these things online. And um, he was talking about the, the Leeds team that he played in, you know, so it wasn't pretty to watch. But how he was talking about the question was asked was the sort of how were the different managers that he played under like you know and it's like and the, the one that I'm saying I'm talking about this before is because it was Howard Wilkinson and he said it wasn't pretty to watch 
but they'd work on set pieces after set piece after set piece after set piece um, until they got it right, even if it was the morning of the game. It would, it would, it would always be the, with the team that was going to be playing. So, um, yeah, that was... Uh, we are predictable. We are, we're predictable um, at the back when losing, losing goals like this, and we're predictable at the front with not really capitalising on set pieces. Um, what, what, how many minutes are you at, James? Yeah, I'm 19 minutes in. You've got to think about a game like this. Last season, it's exactly the sort of game where you'd be looking for someone like Kyogo to make an impact, where he's the sort of player that could grab the crucial goal that would get you back in the game almost straight away. I remember late on last season, I think we went 1-0 down to Hearts as well, pretty early on. And I think it was goals from Kyogo and Maeda, but it was 2-1 up and they're both in the squad. But Kyogo's just not making the same impact this season as he was last season. No, I know. It was funny with the gaffer coming out and saying as well that he's not changed him with he's not changed his approach at all. Almost putting it back well, he's putting right back onto Kyogo's toes, isn't he? Um and I, or collectively I think as fans, or certainly us on Axon, we I think we all determined that it, it looks like the, well, the style of play has changed, you know, and it's not it's not playing to, to his strengths. But the, the gaffer's coming out and saying, Oh, he's not asking him to do anything differently. Um so Oh, I don't know or whether he get on better with Ange, and he's he's not sort of uh, he's not really warm to to Brendan Rodgers. Could we could we put it down to that a little bit? I don't know. Um, but he's such a great asset. He's such a he's a, he's and the the goals he scored last season under Ange, um, you know, and the, and the, it's they're just clever. They're off this on that shoulder and just dropping in the wee pockets, and he's not doing it for some reason. So there's there's some. There's some some disconnect. I'm going to ask you a question, guys. Um, Laura Bradburn, who was on just before we went live here as part of the Axon Charity Weekender, um, thoughts on the hoops. We had a discussion, and the discussion we had was, let's uh, devise our greatest Celtic eleven since 2000 without Henrik Larsson, right? So we got to the, uh, the, the top two. We, we decided this is going to be the shape and all the rest of it, Ian. We got to the top two, and there's some phenomenal... Uh, strikers that have played for Celtic, everybody from Gary Hooper uh, to Lee Griffiths. And we had a whole discussion about Griffiths and why he was in the, in the equation. Chris Sutton, Kyogo, um, Eduard, Moussa Dembele, etc., etc., etc. Who do you play up top? And a lot of fans would have Kyogo in there. And this is in, in the in the top team in the last 20 years. I mean, would you have Kyogo in there if Larson can't get picked? Mm, you got people like Dembele and Edward as well. They mm. really stick in my mind. I think those successful seasons Celtic have had in my lifetime or my time supporting it, Musa Dembele was the main man. He was a star striker. I think being associated with seasons like that and successes like that will always favour you higher in my book. And the goals, the numbers that Kyle has been putting up, I mean, he has to have a place somewhere. So do yeah. you go? Do you go two up top with the team? I mean, two up, no, it was two up top. Who do you go for? So yeah, I was thinking, Kyogo and then Belly. Kyogo and then Belly, because my, my choice actually, James, and I love them Belly by the way, but my choice was Kyogo and Sutton, and that might just be because I Sutton was part of a team uh, just before your time, really. I think maybe you didn't experience it as much. Maybe that's the reason why. But I went Sutton and Kyogo. What about yourself, Ian? Ah, honestly, right? What a, what a, what a horrible question, really. Um, it's a horrible question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because almost as horrible as watching us defend a corner kick. Yeah. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna agree with James there, um, and then when you said Sutton, I can't go against Sutton, and, and, but it would be with Kyogo, to be honest. Um, unless you had the two big men, Dembele. Uh, sorry, yeah, had Dembele and Sutton, but big man, little man. Yeah, you know, I'm a bit of a, a traditionalist. So I think I would go Kyogo and Sutton as well. But Sutton, Sutton, I mean, jeez, man, he was he, oh, he, was, he was one of the really top really. best strikers in the English Premier League. Yeah. yeah, he was, and like he had that one stinker. Luckily for us, he had that stinker of a season at, at Chelsea. He should never have gone to Chelsea. He's far too good a guy to ever play for a club like that. Um, but thankfully, we, that that aided Martin O'Neill to you know helped him get get him up the road. You know, mm-hmm. um, and if ever a player was made for a team. Sutton just came in. He's, he's one of us. He's, he's like you know. I know he's straight he's, off the he's, bat. Right. Straight off the bat, Ian. Yeah. And and we can't under underplay as well. You look at the way he he, he 
he, he operates in the media now. Um, very, very intelligent guy. Um, knows his stuff. But he was a standard setter. You know, you could see when he, when he talked about the captains in the dressing room, that, that Martin O'Neill team, they had a team of captains, mm -hmm. you know, not just the guy with the armband. Um, and he was talking about McGeady's and that, you know, that when these young players were coming through. They, we've, we've talked about, you know, how, you know the, sort of the B team and, and players going out on loan and things like that. I imagine playing against the first team and training, that first team, that would get you ready for anything, you know, because you had you had that that kind of old, I suppose, older school mentality. But um, I, I said in the group chat today, no one said anything again. I, I led balloons, <laughs> but and, and I would love to see someone like Sutton, or actually Sutton, coming as like a sporting director at Celtic. Whether he do it, or I don't know. Like the, like the way Edu does it at Arsenal. Um, I think there's a place for a lot of ex-players, and every time I mention it, Ian, I, I get hit with the um, the counter argument that it's jobs for the boys. I, yeah, I'm not sure about that because the, the, the jobs for friends. But Jackie Mack, Jackie Mack, the manner for me is a youth talent spotter. That's what he is. I mean, the amount of players the that... club, then. But they care about the club, you know. They, they, they care about the club. They know the club. Mm -hmm. They know the fabric of the club. But I'm talking about the Mickey, John, Mickey Johnson's won a few corners um, in this this first half. There's a bit of intent yeah. about him. Sorry to to butt in, and no, I'm just no, looking no. for Mickey, Mickey Johnson looking for a bright spot. He's kind of like, he reminds me a little bit of, of McGeady, but without the end product. And McGeady used to frustrate me with, with not having an end product all the time. So he's a lesser lesser McGeady, if you like. Um, and it's work, he, he can work on it. He can, he can make it better, you know. <laughs> I'm just going to throw in an observation here. You know how all season, James, I've been going on about uh, Greg Taylor always looking crabbit and grumpy and like blaming <laughs> everybody else. Remember that? McGeady was that guy. Wasn't it, Ian? McGeady just yeah. always looked unhappy. He was always in a huff, always in a mood. I'm going to bring someone up here, actually, from Alan Morrison, obviously, of the Huddle Breakdown, who will be appearing on tomorrow's um, show. And, obviously, uh, Alan has been for a long time on A Celtic State of Mind as well. And he said, and this is interesting on Twitter, he was talking about the, the midfield dilemma that we seem to have at the moment. Uh, he's talking about playing certain players for certain games. He goes, uh, we seem to be special teaming midfield. This is on his Celtic by Numbers uh, social media channel. If you need space covering athleticism, play Bernardo. If you need goals versus a tight defence, you play Turnbull. And if you need a bit of chaos and unpredictability, you play Hatati. And what about stiffness and solidity? You play Awata. And he goes on to say, wouldn't it be good to have someone with, some of, with a, a number of these elements? It is true, though, James. It seems as though we are picking that final midfielder based on the opposition eh? yeah it really seems that you're seeing Turnbull is not getting trusted in the European games where there's going to be more space available you're going to get maybe a, a bit more time on the ball and for these domestic games he's been picked all the time and that's because he's got good close control he's good with the ball at his feet which is needed to break down these tough defences that you're going to come up against so if you can try and solve that position soon. I think Hattati coming back gives Celtic an incredibly well-balanced midfield. I mean, Matt O'Reilly's <laughs> already a bit of an all-rounder. You can say the same about Carl McGregor. And then the creative flair that Rio Hattati brings to the team, I think he's going to be massive. It's going to be like a new sign. And I know it's a cliche when a guy comes back from a long-term injury, but he is going to be like a new sign in January because you can tell even from games like today where we're not getting much risk taken, you're not getting much creativity, you're not getting much drive from the midfield. That's the absence of Rio Patai is evident. And you've seen that oh, on yes. a number of occasions this season. And people were quick to criticise him at the start of the season, myself included. And now you're seeing what it's like without Rio Hatai. And the team is definitely better off with him in it. No, you're, there's no doubt about it. Celtic obviously are applying some pressure, but again, when we're applying that pressure, it's not with um, the tempo, Ian. It's not like, you know, we're able to have a, a passing movement that's cutting through the defence. We're, we're kind of labouring it. We're winning a lot of corners. But we've been in this movie before. We need to make these count. I mean, we're not great, just as Palmer plays this in. We're not great. At, uh, and, and in fact, the, the, the data will tell you that uh, a lot of teams are not great at scoring directly from the cross. And I don't mean straight into the net. I mean from the delivery, scoring from the corner. 
I we just took a short corner there. Um, but now we've got a, Katarvik is just giving that free kick away on the edge of our box now. But they, Hearts just, they, we lost the ball and, then, and they cut through us like a knife through butter. Did you see that? Yeah. Aye, it's too easy. Yeah, it's, we're too easy to play against in that respect. And I, and I thought that we're going to get a full house when, when James was talking uh, about a new signing um, because it's like we, we, there's certain things we say all the time. Um, he's going to be like a new site. Oh, you know? God, this is turning into something of a disaster. We're half an hour into the game um, and the possession has been all Celtic. We've been attacking, attacking, attacking. Hearts have gone up the park and scored two goals. So we're, we're now in a situation where it's going to be the comeback of comebacks. Um, I've been talking this season, James, about a Jekyll and I, just too easy to play against, Ian. It, it, cutting through us like a hot knife through butter. Um, I've been talking about the Jekyll and Hyde uh, element of Celtic this season, James. And, it, I mean, how, how big a part of that is the chopping and changing of the team, do you think? I think he's dropped off, James, is he? James, he's had enough. He's had enough. He's yeah. thought, no, nah, I'm not doing it. Was he's off I uh, see the youth of today, Ian. They've no, they've no staying power. Um, <laughs> everybody needs to go through a nine in a row reverse so that you can take these things, no matter what happens, no matter what they throw at you. So yeah. you, you've got you've got the Jambos uh, winning a a free kick, um, and it's just about you know defending a set piece initially, you know defending a corner kick which they scored from, um, and then. If, if you can't do these basics right, you're up against it. You're then looking at your creative players to to now, um, for the next hour of this game, score three goals and pull this one from the mire. Um, we, we've been told, oh, we're in, a, we're in a title. We're in a title fight, this, that and the other. But at this moment in time, looking at this, Celtic seem intent on throwing it away. It, it's it's frightening. Yeah, frightening. I watched yeah, I mean, the re- re- replay of this goal. I've just missed it. I mean, you can talk all day about set pieces and, and this, that and other. I mean, it's from some distance, James. It's from quite a distance to be scoring. Um, oh, Hart was at fault there, I think, you know, his, his positioning. Um, I watched the Rangers game the other night against um, Real Betis and it was like two terrible two terrible teams. I, you know, I was, I was thinking, so like they beat Betis and I, I didn't realise how bad Betis were. They were pretty good going forward, but the defence was absolutely shocking. Um, and so was Rangers, but that Rangers team would beat this Rangers team. And I, you know, because after the game, I thought, well, do you know what? Rangers are pretty rubbish. I'm not. I'm not really fussed about. Um, I hope I'm not jinxing it. Well, I probably have done now, but um, that was just my, my personal thoughts that I've now just shared with the internet. But um, it's uh, <laughs> exactly you're now going to get clipped and, and it's going to go viral. <laughs> I know. You just you know got what? you got into that that groovy just having a, a wee chat with two mates about football. No, but you're right though, Ian. It's like. I look at that as well. I mean, fair play to McGregor for driving us forward. So we need players now to step up. Um, was a- we've been talking, sorry, sorry, and we've just been talking all season about um, the impact of Rogers and this guy's regressed and this guy's got better. You know what? Step up as an individual, step up as a team and win the game. That's it. There was a driving run before. I couldn't see who it was, actually. I don't know if it was. Uh, that was Carmack, um, yeah. Was it Carmack? Mm-hmm. Um, but then he held, he held on to it. He could have slotted through Kyogo earlier. Yeah. And he didn't, and he ended up, ended up going wide. We made the keeper make a save, but it should have gone earlier, you know. And and and, and Kyogo, that's what I was saying before about when Kyogo prowls out that, that high line, he's good enough to, to knock a ball in, fire a ball in, and he'll, he'll get it under control and get a shot off. Um, but he just held on to it too long there. So these these little things, that's why I was thinking about Palmer in the middle. I wouldn't mind seeing him in the middle for a little bit and, and seeing if, if he can sort of thread these wee balls through. Um, because that's exactly that's all he needs. That's all. That's all the wee man needs. It's just a little, a little half chance. Yeah, because sometimes I think we tie ourselves up in knots when it comes to um, trying to second guess the opponent you're playing. We're going back to Alan Morrison's point here. You know, playing specific midfielders for a specific game, and domestically there's an argument, James, to say, well, you know what, we have got the best players, and we've got enough to win the game. Why confuse matters? Why confuse individual players? Uh, why try and implement ways of playing or styles of playing when actually we should be able to have enough to go out and beat Hearts at home? Uh, we're sitting here after half an hour and we're two nothing down. I mean, it, there can't be a drop off of a group of players to such a degree that all of a sudden we're a bad team. 
cool. Yeah, it's just a massive drop off in performance. I've seen the second goal. It's there's not much you can do about that one. It's a fantastic finish. I mean, you can't really put too much blame on anyone for that one. But you've really got to save it here. This is going to be a massive. Yeah, this is where really it starts to get a bit. Exactly. This is the this is the moment. Like two weeks ago, right? You've got to also remember, um, and it is about Celtic. The whole stream's about Celtic, but the nearest challengers the, and the, the ones that are going to be breathing down your neck and uh, winning the league if we don't get a finger out are Rangers. And their season, right, is one whereby they've spent a fair bit of money in the summer and the guys that they brought in didn't look up to the task. They've sacked a manager. They've, they've had an, you know, within the first half of a season, they've had a change in manager. And us, the treble winners, are capitulating. We're throwing points away left, right and centre. You know, and there's been all this moaning about recruitment, not just by us. There's been messages in press conferences from the gaffer about um, dissatisfaction of that transfer window. And it shows, it shows it's disjointed. We've got a massive vocal element of the sport uh, support not in the stadium right now, James. There's a lot of issues on and off the park. We seem very disjointed at the moment. Yeah, it's been a toxic atmosphere since... For a good few months, and you always thought, I think I said it at the start of the season, that the fans will be pretty quick to turn if Rodgers isn't doing well because of the manner that he left and the negative reaction that came along with that. Rodgers coming back, the fans are going to be much quicker to change on Rodgers if results aren't going his way. And you were seeing some, some warning signs at the start of the season, but it's not looking good now in this game. And Celtic, they really need to turn it around. They've got um, 55 minutes to do so, and it remains to be seen if they will. No, this is right, and then you get all the arguments, because I, I've came out and said I don't want Lauren Strangland to sign for Celtic. No, I don't. I don't, absolutely don't want him to sign for us, but um, people say, oh, well, you know, he scored today and you got beat. Well, we're not beat yet. There's plenty of time in today's game to bring it back. There's plenty of quality in the Celtic side to pull this back, but I do feel that we, we look very disjointed um, and, and the, the usual scapegoats, uh, if we don't win a game like this, it'll get, uh, you know, they'll get on the back of Mikey Johnston, Greg Taylor, uh, Joe Hart. Th this is exactly what happens. Uh, we spoke about the start in 11, um, just as a, a saves pulled off from a long range effort um, a minute or two ago, actually, from uh, David Tumble. Just looking, you look to see more of that long range effort. You do, because you're, you're 2 0 behind. You've got, to, you've got to start taking gambles. You've got to start taking chances like that. And that might be where someone like Turnbull might be important, I think. Aye, and that's why he's in the start. I, I just feel, I was talking about momentum, Ian. The, the momentum of a run of games, no matter what competition the games are in, and starting that run again, fire nerd, because we've got this game at the end of the month, which it was already a must win. You lose that game today and it, it, it puts everything in a different light. And trying to build that momentum, but all, all season, this is what's been happening, isn't it? Good result followed by a bad result. And at, at the moment, it's not finished yet. This is the same old story that we're seeing here from Celtic. Yep. Yeah, it is. Uh, you just can't need to get to January. And then hopefully Brendan doesn't bring in the uh, the striking version of Doris de Rees. <laughs> we black book, <laughs> you know. Um, that's why we obviously might not be a bad shout. Um, but there are there are bigger problems than a, just a striker. I think you know it's it is the harmony within the club. It's, we're not united, you know. And it's I know I know, uh, I know um, we keep talking about it. Brendan kept talking about it. Um, he can't come out and say it publicly, but there's something not right. There's something not right, and I'm, I've not finished this blog. I'm pontificating a little bit. I need to get this this blog finished. I've been writing it for a couple of weeks about Brendan coming back. You know, and it's essentially, you know, is he is he going to fall flat on his face? But um, was it through gritted teeth? When, when you know, when he left, was it on good terms last time um, with, with with Lawwell and things like that? This is only speculation. And then, you know, was it Desmond identified that we wanted Rogers back? Was it Lowell had to go and get him? You know, or Nicholson had to go and get him? Was it through gritted teeth? Especially about, you know, my boss, I'm only getting, I'm only bringing you in because my boss wants you, not me. But the day to day relationship is with Nicholson and, and is with um, the chairman. It's not with, it's not with Desmond day to day. Maybe on the phone it is. 
So is that where there's, a, there's potentially a, 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 a bit of... Um, oh. oh. Sorry, I nearly scored. Um, is that where is that where the, the disharmony is? Um, purely speculative, but it could, it's a possibility. Um, you know, they all linked hands, didn't they? And they, uh, when he came back that time, as if it was if it was a unity, and they're all was all sort of uh, belly laughs and things like that. But was, I don't know. There was clearly something not right. And the fact that we're taking ourselves so seriously as well, you know, with the ego stuff with the, with, the, with the Green Brigade, the the Celtic podcast guys getting banned for. Yeah. for it's like we the other the, the team across Glasgow were famed for having no humour and doing all this kind of stuff. Exactly. So we're all in that, ter- that, ter- that territory as well. Yeah, well, what I'm I wonder is, is going to pick up on that. None, Sorry, of us, go, James. none of us have worked in football. None of us have been in a dressing room or anything of the sort. But how does a negative sort of reaction from supporters, a negative atmosphere in our ground? discontent off the part between the board and the Green Brigade, how does that filter into the dressing room? How does media <laughs> pressure filter into the dressing room? How does oh, we've lost against Kamarnock at the weekend the fans are going crazy on social media how does that affect a squad? How do you galvanise a squad to get to bounce back even when so much is going against it? It, it definitely has an effect this is the thing and, and the only reason I, I can find that evidence is by reading about or speaking to people who have been in scenarios like that, James, and as you know, through my own research and, and just through it's having a sense. passion for the oh, history. Yeah. It's a massive chance. Yeah, I know. And, and I've been speaking to a lot of people. I mean, I, I've spoke to people who were in the dressing room in the, the, the famous 1979 for the 4-2 game when 10 men won the league and the positive impact that the Celtic support made on, on the team. You then have to use the, the COVID season as an example of the negative impact of not having the fans in the stadium uh, because we played like, you know, within ourselves that we were an absolute shell of a football side. Um, so there's definitely an impact. Talk about media. Um, we, we've had a wee chat today, earlier on today, about the, the Seville season. We started off the stream uh, this morning at seven o'clock, talk about the Seville season. That's a huge chance. You've got to score that. And um, the media. You know, boys against boys against men and all the rest of it. You pin that up; it became a cliche. You pin the headline up on the dressing room. There's your your pre match. There's your talk. So yeah, it definitely has a has an impact. And if you're willing, for some strange reason, going back to Ian's point, if you're willing not to have a very vocal and a very influential um, group of fans not at the not at the ground when we need them, it's a huge mistake. You're shooting yourself in the foot. You're shooting yourself in the foot big time. I was going to say before, so when did we become so reliant on the Green Brigade? I'm just thinking about we I think had it's been a um, gradual, yeah, it's been a gradual thing, isn't it? I had colleagues over years ago for the if we took them to the um, the AC Milan game. We won two one, and the atmosphere was absolutely as European nights are. It was electric, and to my best of my knowledge, I can't remember the Green Brigade being there that night as a group. But the atmosphere was absolutely. Unbelievable, and we had these Canadians over, and they were just like blown away. It was like they were, on, you know, it was yeah, they could not. I mean, I couldn't believe it, but it was like imagine how proud you are when you're like it's your team, you know, and, and we won the game as well. Um, so uh-huh. I can't remember that, you know, we were vocal all night, and it was just it was electric. Um, so but I think you know, we, we if we if we become too reliant on them, that can that can that can feed their ego as well, you know, collectively. I'm saying they, but it's a group of you know, like minded. Um, so there's a decision maker at Celtic with an ego, whoever it is, ultimately, who's, who's, who's saying they can't, you know, they can't resolve it. And there's a decision maker with, within the Green Brigade. Um, they need to, someone's got to manfully stand down, and I don't think it's going to be Celtic, is it? It's the same in every relationship, isn't it? There, there comes a point where um, even if one, both parties think they're in the right, Ian, to a degree, it will re- it will require compromise. If you want a resolution, um, you mentioned the, the the fan media thing over this weekend, and particularly tomorrow, you will see a whole host of fellow um, Celtic platforms on our platform for the good of charity, and it shows you how many quality Celtic podcasts there are. <laughs> and and a, a few have been in touch to say we would have loved to have been part of it, but X, Y, and Z means that we can't. It's it's a busy time of the year. Absolutely no bad blood, but from that 
you find out that obviously a Celtic platform has been banned, been banned from the press conferences, etc. And I'll tell you what it was for. Wait, it wasn't because banned. You allowed to say? On the yeah, four times, four times, four times on the podcast. Four I didn't see it. On the yeah, they've been banned. Now, four times in a pod, we've got a good relationship with them. Um, they've been in our previous studio in Dal Keith. They've taken part in our fundraisers. And um, they've got a, a very uh, unique style about them uh, in that they don't they don't care about rocking the boat. Uh, they've got a great sense of humour. Ian, going back to what you said before, one of the funniest moments on the charity weekender came from their, their input. But they had the audacity to retweet something it wasn't their tweet. It wasn't something they said on their broadcast. They simply retweeted something that the club didn't like and they've been banned. So that level of control is unhealthy, Ian. Surely that's an unhealthy level of control, like you say, where you can't even have a group of people retweeting something or finding something funny or tongue-in-cheek. It gets to the narcissistic level of where you've got a... A person normally it's associated with a person, but I mean, let's talk about a narcissistic culture then, whereby yeah. you put yourself on a platform and you think you're so good and you're better than anybody else to the point where anybody that challenges that, anybody that laughs at that, becomes the enemy and you attack them as a result of it. It's an it's like a narcissistic culture that 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 sounds to me as though that's been engendered there. And if you you go against us, Ian. We'll just lock you out. I mean, will we even be locked out just for questioning it? Well, listen, they're, they're clearly in a bubble, you know, and it's like, you know, Michael Nicholson came in and he was part of, he was seemed to be part of a little group and, and nicely slaughtered in after um, Mackay was, was disposed of. You know, was it was it like, you know, was was, was Mackay a little bit of chlorine coming in and, and uh, you know, sanitising, not sanitising, sorry, um, just bringing some common sense or bringing some fresh ideas in. It wasn't fresh like, yeah. or, or was he terrible? We'll, we'll never know. But the, the club will have us believe, and they've kind of chucked him under the bus, you know, by saying and suggesting that he, he was up, wasn't up to scratch. Um, but it's that, that little tiny bubble, and when you're in it, it that becomes an echo chamber. Um, and it, it's if you're in a wee echo chamber, you know, hear your own voices. You know, you're not, you're not getting, you're, you're, it's distorted. It's not a reality. You're not, you're not, you're not part of reality. You're not taking the pit. And any of the best cultures, and you can't do things by committee. You know, you've got to have people in charge. Yeah. But you, you must welcome fresh you've ideas. You must welcome you've it. Just got to be open. Over. But that's where the narcissism comes in, Ian, because a narcissist will never listen to your view. The narcissist will never say to, to you, actually, I think you're maybe right. We're maybe not doing this right. Because they've, they've put themselves on a pedestal to such a degree that they think they're actually superior to you. So your idea doesn't count. It doesn't even come into the equation. I'm not going to be open to any creativity. Don't ask me a difficult question because I don't want to hear it. Don't criticise us in any way, shape or form or disagree with us because I don't want to hear it. And that that worries me a bit. This isn't knee-jerk um, for anybody who's tuning in because we are live. We're watching the game as three Celtic fans and we're trying to be as balanced as possible. Uh, we're not going to throw the toys at the pram and we're not going to chuck the baby out with the bathwater. Um, but what this needs is, if 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 Rogers was angry at McDermott Park, and he got a reaction, James, from his players, who knows what happened in that dressing room? I said afterwards it could be that moment that we had under Neil Lennon at Rugby Park when we were three nothing down. Remember that we pulled it back to a three each, saved his bacon, we went on to to great things under Neil Lennon after that. You can't do it every week because that impact is lost, Ian, isn't it? From the big managers, that impact is lost. You don't keep getting the reaction, do you? Because it becomes white noise. It becomes background static, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, you got to pick and choose. Yeah, went, like Neil Lennon, I was. I, I love listening to Neil Lennon as well. The way he talks, and it's like you know, he's got that. He's got that old school kind of. He's a part of the old school, you know. Where I think he's a lot of them struggle, you know, with with the sort of the new breed of, of player, you know. And it's like, and Strachan said it in that podcast. It was like it's right back to. It's not just the players in the football culture, it's, it's right back to when people are at school. You know, and people certainly over here as well, it's the same where like everyone gets a prize. You know, it's not best gets the prize, you know, it's the same as junior football or youth football here. Everyone gets, you know, like 
a kid could score 12 goals, but he knows he's not getting player of the day that week because he got it last week. It's going to go to Johnny. Johnny, don't, I don't like football. I'm just before shocked to you because my mum's making me do it. And it's that culture that is in society now. You know, I can say that because I remember the old school and I've, I've got children now who are part of this new, the new school. So that's not anyone's fault. That's just the way society is kind of gone, you know. Um, so to try and get that reaction, it's different to the old days, as said by the likes of Neil Lennon, where, you know, before when he was a kid, some of the stuff, and Gordon Strachan and nieces with some of the things that were said to him, him and the, the players at Aberdeen by Fergie. Yeah. You know, it was like they laugh about it now. It's a bit like it'd be classed as abuse now, you know. And so we don't want we don't want people to be going through that kind of stuff. But it's it's different. It's different skill sets now to, to try and get reaction and rise out of players. They're so wealthy with one contract. A lot of players, you know, um, youth youth players and things like that. Where's that that drive and determination? Does that does that just eclipse pride? You know, and pride in the jersey. You know, I don't know. I really don't know. It's 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 a, it's a far more difficult job, I'd say, than it, than it used to be. Um, the, the carrot and stick doesn't work anymore. No, no, it pride. doesn't because you, you can talk about the culture of a specific team, um, or you can talk about the culture of football because I think it's more of a a football culture thing, whereby, yeah, you listen to some of the um, the processes that went on. You mentioned, uh, you know, young guys coming through. That can, that cannot continue uh, in a modern society. You can't treat people like that. Absolutely not. But you still be able. You've still got to be able to motivate people. And sometimes that motivation is through the fear of no getting a game, the fear of no being at the club. And um, if you remove that, then that that's a, a huge motivational factor that you are losing as a manager and as a coach. What you've got when you're at Celtic. Um, that's James just popped off, by the way. He can't handle it anymore. He's had enough. He's gone. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Um, what what you have at Celtic Football Club is you have the, the best possible facilities in which to work. What an environment. What an environment in which to work and develop as a footballer and become a better individual. And you can put people on a you can put people on a pedestal and say, look at that as an example. Look at what happened when. Matt O'Reilly came to the club and look what he's going on to achieve. Look what's happened when a young Norwegian kid called Chris Ayer came to the club. We gave him this platform. We gave him all the facilities and an environment which allows him uh, to improve as a football player Ian, and probably as a, as a personality and as a person as well. And look where he is now. He's gone on and he's got that big move and he's playing in you know one of the top leagues in, in European football. And there's loads of examples. We could go through them time and time and time again. But what happens is there's a bit of a, a, a lackadaisical attitude, there's a complacency. And this isn't just Celtic, it's, it's across the board. You've got guys who are 17 and 18 year old with loads of money in the bank, Ian, and they think yeah. they've made it. think they made it, and they've never kicked the ball for Celtic. I remember one time being outside the stadium, um, waiting, and it was during the, the COVID thing where there was, uh, we're at that stage where press conferences were still happening, uh, but you were only allowed one in and a cameraman and this, etc., etc., etc. And I'm waiting outside. Someone else was actually in doing the press conference. And I'm experiencing kids, because that's all they were, who had the Celtic gear on and they had better cars than you and me and they're whizzing about that car park and I didn't even recognise them because mm. they're never going to be Celtic players. But there's that culture where it's, it's take, 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 take. They've got everything everything and by the time they're 21 they've got nothing because they've never kicked the ball for the club and it's not just Celtic it's across the board so people can hide they can hide in the game how much does that mean to them there the fact that they're going into that half time break two nothing down does it mean enough to enough of them and this is what I was talking about when you bring nine players in and the nine players represent 28 percent of your squad that can be a problem Ian, if they if they're 28 percent aren't aligned to your work ethic, uh, to your never say die attitude, to the fact that that there in the first half is unacceptable. You do not get beat to nothing from Hearts at home. Doesn't happen. As enough of them getting that, and this is what this is what happens um, when you bring twenty eight percent new staff into the organisation or into the football club. They twenty eight percent aren't just a standalone fenced off group of players 
who don't infiltrate the thought processes, the culture, the mood of others within the dressing room. And what you get then is you get a half a football there against Hearts where we look completely disjointed. We can't string passes together, we can't create chances, and we're getting beat 2-0. And it's too easy to play against us. And that's where we are right now. There's a lot of comments coming through. I'm going to start working my way through them here. But what you need is you need a massive moment in that dressing room and you need a reaction in the second half. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, also as well, this is a, this is true of England. It's that, remember when you used to have the, the, the foreigner rule? So you had to have a, a large percentage. Was it only, you could only have three so-called foreigners, and that included Irish players. Um, the core mentality is not from Scotland. So even if you are brought up a Celtic fan or not, you still understand what it's like to play for a club like Celtic. You know, in, in days gone by, you know, look, look at the centenary team, the, the, the great team that we loved and adored. We still do. Um, that was, made that you know, there, there wasn't players from overseas in that pretty much, you know, and it was like, you know, that, that was that core mentality. So when you talked before about, you know, What's in the dressing room? How does it affect the play? How does it affect the team? When you have unity, when you have that 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 absolute bond of brothers, brotherhood, um, you can it, you can get beyond anything. You know that's Jock Steen when he you know with the Lisbon Lions and all that stuff. And he, all the team bonding stuff that's he was he was well ahead of his time. You know the, the, these this, this siege mentality type thing that Alex Ferguson did so well as well. You know, is it possible in the modern era to sort of do that when you have? People coming over, and you know they might, yeah, they, they, they end up leaving, loving, loving Celtic. Most of them, less than Dirk Borita. Um, but it's it, it, it leaves a mark on them. It leaves an impression. But you can't transplant that into a, a new player coming in through the door. It takes time to organically grow. Um, and if you do that, you do that with more and more players all at one time. You know, it's 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 really hard to. Really hard to capture that mentality and what it's like to play for Celtic in Scotland. Yeah, you know. And then, and then you you find yourself in a moment. We've not lost this game, but the way it's going, we're going to lose it. And you're in the half time break, Ian, and you're looking at that as a manager, and you're thinking, right, I may have a clutch of players on that park who are I'm up for this fight, mm-hmm. and I'm going into the second half, and I'm not confident that they're going to score three goals and win the game because two goals isn't enough here. You need to win the game. And then you look to your bench and you think to yourself, where's my character on the bench? Where's the players that are going to game, change this game for me? And there's very, very few and far between. We had a giggle about it before the game. Quan and Burnaby, what are they going to do for you in the second half? Seriously. You then start thinking, right, I'm, I'm looking at, okay, Welsh is there in case we get an injury at your centre half. He's not going to change a game, right? He's not going to change a game unless you completely change the shape of your team, bring on another centre half and completely flood that midfield to create chances because we need to win this game. There were moments last season where, um, and it was pointed out last week, it was a great point, I think maybe uh, Patrick made it uh, on on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday about the fact that we were bringing O'Reilly on. O'Reilly wasn't getting a game. Moy was the first pick and we are bringing O'Reilly on in games. We don't have the quality and depth. This is a problem. We've got plenty of players, loads of players, but we don't have the quality and depth. Um, there's a lot of unha- unhappy Celtic fans in the comments, and I want to bring some of them in, and it's only fair. Uh, it's one of the days, and we need to bring it in. Anthony Beattie, put Lager Belk out on loan like I are. There might be a player there. I just think that the whole situation where a player who is part of a squad who has got a group of players, and I don't mean a clique, a group of players who are like his mates, etc. You're not just affecting the player, Ian. If you if that happens, if you you know, listen, is he injured? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. I've been streaming since seven o'clock this morning. I've not heard that he's injured. But if somebody does that, makes a name for himself and is completely dropped, what does it say for the rest of the players? What does it do for team morale? You know, and this is the issue because every one of the guys, you need them now. Every single person in that dressing room and those on the bench, as a gaffer, you need somebody to step up for you and you need a number of them to do it. I've not seen much of that in the first half. There was a driving run that you picked up on with Callum McGregor where it looked as though he was just grabbing the situation by the, the scruff of the neck. Franny, it's going to have to be 4-2 uh, in that second half. This is the confidence that a win in Europe gives you, and rightly so, and we go into that game 
and we're two nothing down. Um, Mantis Toboggan CCV is back in Welsh. Played well the other night. We don't need two centre backs on the bench, so Lagerbill drops out. Yeah, I get it. I absolutely get it. Um, but at the same time, I'm talking about morale. I'm talking about the morale of the team, of the groups of players that you've got in that team, who might be a bit put out because they're thinking that's unfair. After the Ross County game, first game of the season, Ian, Matt O'Reilly took the time out to talk about the fact that Turnbull hadn't been getting a game enough. It does affect people. It affects groups of players, not cliques, groups yeah. of players. And if you brought in 28% new guys and they all end up you know, associating with two or three different players, yeah. that's a huge percentage. There's something wrong here um, at this moment in time uh, with the team. I don't know what it is. We're looking at individual performances. We're looking at individual games and it's not clicking yet. There, there comes a point, Ian, where you can't just keep saying, oh, we've had a bad transfer window. That's the reason why. Wait until we get to January because by the time you get to January, you might not be top of the league. You can't keep, you cannot keep blaming one transfer window, can you? No. Uh, the thing, the thing about Ange again, he's my my, my obligatory um, Ange praise moment. But he didn't. He just go on with it. He didn't. He didn't keep complaining about it. He just go on with it. Um, and I've. Brendan, last time there was a, there was a, he had a little bag of excuses, you know, and it's like you know he's, he's used a few of them, and it, albeit in a veiled way. Um, I think Brendan does need to get to the January transfer window, but it's a different style, you know. It's, it's he was lo he was lauded for you know kind of uh, and by Matt O'Reilly in particular about the, the he welcomed the, his style of management, his approach, you know, and he's a, he's a players manager and all that kind of stuff in terms of. Personal ability and sitting them for lunch and all that kind of stuff, whereas, whereas Ange was the opposite. Um, I think Ange kind of spoke about his dad the way his dad used to be, you know, kind of stoic, you know, man a few words, you know, and, and he used to have to work hard for any kind of praise. I think he, that was how he tra treated his players. Mm -hmm. So, different, entirely different styles, you know, um, which again was echoed with Matt O'Reilly. Um, but it's so disjointed, it's got to be called into question Brendan's man management style. Um, has he got favourites? Has he got... I don't know. I, I honestly can't put my finger on it. You know, and it's like, if there's dysfunction above Brendan, it's his job as the manager to be a shock absorber, to absorb that and not let it affect the players. Um, but then it seems that there's a little bit of political manoeuvring going on in terms of the you know, disgruntlement from Brendan with the transfer dealings. So, Lagabell, for example, becomes a pawn in this game. Um, and you're right. If he's got a, a, a friend or two in the dressing room with a confidant, you know, and stuff, they are going to be upset with the way their mates treated, especially if it's an injustice or perceived injustice. And this seems like a perceived injustice that he's, to not even have him on the bench. You know, that's 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 it's mean spirited, it's really, you know. But again, it's probably not personal. It's probably Rogers just, you know, making underlying his point because it's it's his uh, it's his appendage on the block ultimately. If he doesn't win the league, so he's yeah. got he's got to he's got to be ruthless. So I mean that's what we're that's what we're we're demanding of as well. So he sees the, the players in training every week, not us. Um, I fully trust Brendan. You know, I, I, I might seem a bit negative towards Brendan. I'm not I'm not a blind fool. I might be a fool. I'm not blind at the moment. But, but it, it's I trust him. He's an elite coach. He needs a he needs a window. Um, and he'll do the business. I'm, I'm no, I've no doubt. And Brendan will go on to bigger and better things elsewhere in a few years' time, um, I'm sure, and, and he'll, he'll, he will be regarded as one of the greats, I'm sure. But um, at the moment, this is part of his learning, again. He's got, he, he's got to navigate through these stormy waters. Another, another statement by me, you know, but it's like, it's, 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 it's a cliche. It's a bit true. character, isn't it? No, but it's a yeah, character, Ian. It's when yeah. he's earning these stripes, you know. It's, mm -hmm. you, it's, if you find out more about yourself and, 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 and teammates and, and players in the, in the adversity times, um, and this is one of those bumpy moments, you know, but it's not going to last forever. Um, and we'll look back at this through the tapestry of the season and through the tapestry of time. And hopefully it's defining. Hopefully we come back and get a result. Um, but if not, it's not the end of the world. But it's uh, it's another crack in the armory. We need, we, need to, we need to sort out. No, you're right. You're right. And um, incidentally, uh, I've got to thank everybody who's been tuning in today prior to today's game. Obviously with the... Uh, 
the unexpected nature of that first half not really going the way that we expected it to. Uh, expectations different from entitlement. Uh, you would expect it to happen because you would expect the quality of the Celtic team to be prepared in such a way that we go out and have a game plan. What is our game plan? Often I watch this team this season and it's hard to figure out because there's no distinctive identity, Ian. I mean, if you asked me, how did Tommy Burns' team play? If, and, and, and I could also give you the deficiencies of the team. If you ask me, how did Angie's team play? What was wrong with Ronnie Dyla's team? How did New Orleans' team play? They all had identities. I'm struggling to see this identity. Now, uh, uh, you know, is the flip of that the fact that it's not yet his team? Well, see, the minute you take the manager's job, it's your team, yeah. right? And the players that you inherit are your players. Yeah, you can bring other ones in, but you need to do the best that you've got with the players at your disposal. And at the moment, I'm not seeing it, Ian. I'm just not seeing it. I mean, we're, we seem to be making the same mistakes. The big issue for us in the first half, far too easy to, to defend against. Far too easy to defend against and far too easy to attack. Two set pieces, corner kick, free kick, two goals. And it's the story of our season, Ian. It is the story of our season under Brendan Rodgers. I'm going to bring up some of these comments. We're not in a hurry to get away because we're going to cover the second half as well. Uh, this is a watch-along rather than a half-time uh, bulletin. This is simply not good enough, says Mr Celtic 12, um, who has also supported the initiative as well this this uh, weekend. So thank you for that. He is not getting the best out of the lineup. He hasn't all season. Might uh, need to think about might need to think about this over. Um, well, the way that I'm I'm looking at it at this moment in time is oh, oh, oh. your goal was just in there. I was too busy talking there and, and answering it that I've not even seen that particular opportunity. However, what I would say Ian, is um I've been in the, the game of doing live streams long enough not to kick off. Um, but you've got to be honest with the performance. Um, and what we're looking for in this second half is we're looking for the same kind of reaction we got at uh, McDermott Park. It wasn't a perfect uh, performance in the second half, but we dug in and we got the win. The, the players need to respond to the situation and we need to get to a point where it doesn't require that at half time because as you and I have already spoken about in the first half, it starts to lose its impact. Yeah, it does. It does. It looks like a game where we're... we're... Because of that, that lack of clear identity or the identity that has been imprinted, it's too predictable in the build-up. It's across the, across the back, across the back. So what hearts are doing, they're just squeezing. When, we're, when they're defending, they're squeezing and they're just packing out the, cent, cent, the central centre of the pitch and they're letting us have it out wide and we get the... the you know what, just, we're, just, we're just wasting it. We're, not, we're getting in and we're being, being ineffectual. You know, we're, not, we're not stretching them and pulling them all over the place like, like we used to do under Ange. You know, we're, we're still a, a notch or two down in terms of our intensity. No, you're you know? right. There was um, there was no real intensity in that first half. That was an excellent chance, like you're saying. The, the thing with Kyogo is um, we spoke about him in glowing, glowing terms earlier on today. Uh, mm -hmm. Laura Bradburn and I were talking about strikers at Celtic over the last 20 years. And it was a topic of discussion last season when uh, Kyogo was being spoken of when it came to that discussion, who is the final... But there's something wrong when a ball is laid on a plate and it's a ball that Louis Palmer has played a few times this season to good effect. It's a wee dink over the top. And if you've got the runners on, on the shoulder of the last defender, as we know Kyogo can play in that position. Um, and we know that Brendan Rodgers can play a striker in that role as well because that's how Jamie Vardy played for him at Leicester. Mm. Off the shoulder of the, of the last striker. You've got the turning place. You've got the... Uh, you know, you've got the ability to be able to find pockets in behind um, the defenders, and that's exactly what Kyogo's done. But the final part of that is you've got to be clinical. Um, yeah. And uh, I think I think it's the first clean-cut clean, clean cut chance that Kyogo's had in the game. We can't really be in a situation where he needs three or four chances to score a goal. We, we, we just simply can't have that, because you know, we're not creating enough chances. Yeah, we're, getting, we're snatching it a little bit now. It's getting a little bit desperate. It's like, it needs to be... And this is... I think I love about Brendan is like that calmness. He needs to. We need to just be calm and keep playing. And we've, we've been in situations before where it's been, especially in his first first tenure. You know, we we, we look sometimes at the game and got away from us when we were on that big run, um, and we somehow managed to come back and turn it around because we kept calm, and kept playing, kept playing. At the moment, the players seem to be a little bit trigger happy, and they're they're, they're, they're perhaps not 
Well, they're definitely not. Actually, they're not. They're not. They're not playing football the, the way they've been taught. They're, they're not playing football as, as as elite footballers. You know, they're snatching things, and then it, and then we kind of find a position ourselves in a position again where we're having to look, rely on individuals to try and nick something rather than collectively as a team because we're not trusting each other. We're not. We're not. We're not buying into the plan, the game plan. Um, and I think, well, in terms of identity, I think Brendan, he hasn't really changed, is it? It's that kind of, it's that passing out from the back and, you know, it's, it's, it's just predictable. It's just predictable, you know, and it's like you, we need to, a long pass is a long pass. It's not a long ball. You know, they, it's quite happy to do, to do long back passes across the back from side to side, but not, so it doesn't seem to be forward. The forward passes, it seems to be, we, we keep, you know, and, and, and opposition teams, well, and then again, um, opposition teams that they can predict it easily. And so, and the hearts are just, they're just packing out the centre um, when we get to their final third. Predictable. Uh, predictable, yeah. Lacking identity. Um, these are the things that we've been talking about, Ian, and, and I don't think it's a knee jerk reaction because it's not just today, um, during the week. Jekyll and Hyde, Celtic side is what I called it, you know, because we have seen performances both in Europe and also domestically where you've come away from the game thinking, wow, that was fluid. You know, there was a free-flowing nature and style to Celtic's play. Um, sometimes you can't even put your finger on it. It's just we're, we're cutting teams open. Mm -hmm. And uh, the flip side of that is it is virtually the opposite, where we're playing such a, a you know, with, with such a lack of creativity um, I wish Joe Hart would stop punching the ball. I, I wish he would just more commanding Ian, more commanding of his area and just, you know, clutch that ball out of thin air uh, rather than the punches. Because the punches, who knows where they land, you know, you could lose possession, keep yourself under pressure. The, the boy's just standing next to him. He's barely challenging him. Catch the ball, Joe. You're an England internationalist who's played at the top level of European football. Uh, you've got more experience in everybody in the Celtic squad at that level other than Callum McGregor when it comes to Champions League, yet you, you decide to punch a ball in your own six-yard box. The, the, you know, because this is when the confidence starts to drain out yeah. the, not just the, the support, but out the players as well. You know, you've got to lead, you've got to lead from the back and, and show that we're strong and, and we're capable of winning this game at the moment um, as we sit here moving into 50-plus uh, minutes. We don't look as though we've got anything in us that's going to win us the game. You've done a like-for-like like change, which I don't disagree with, uh, bringing off Mikey Johnson for me there. I mean, you've got to make the change. But unless you, you actually change the, the shape, then it's just a like-for-like like change. So you're looking for an individual to play slightly better than the one that he's just replaced Ian. Yeah. Hartzell have worked all week on this, you know, playing yeah. against Celtic, you know, and it's it, needs, it does need a change of, 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 of ideas. You know, uh, needs to ch change the shape. Um, I can, that's the only way I can see is getting anything out of this game. Um, you know, it's, it's too easy. It's too easy. Um, and let's give credit to Hearts as well. You know, they're they're not they're playing all right. You know, they're playing well, and we've we've got no divine right to be winning these games. Um, it's you know, it's it's, it's it has been coming. It has been coming. Um, but what can you say? We just got to. You just got to keep 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 the faith, you know. Keep the faith. Um, it's still a long way to go yet, and haven't watched Rangers of the night. Um, clip this all you like, you know. I thought, I thought, and I'm sure a lot of sort of Rangers fans would, would say the same thing that there was a bit topsy turvy of a game, and defensively they looked really shaky. Um, when Seville were going, uh, when sorry, Betts were going forward, um, and if it wasn't for, for them being so so rubbish at the back, I don't, I can't see Betts losing the game. So that gave me confidence for for, for the league. Um, I think they've had a few dubious <laughs> um, helping hands um, Rangers as well. So I think if we win the league, it's going to be because Rangers aren't up up to the up to scratch rather than us being very good. Um, yeah, yeah, because we're not we're not looking we're not looking like a, a, a good team. Never mind a great team at this moment in time. Um, and <clears throat> there may well be that reliance on being the best of a bad bunch, and you take it. Of course, you do. You absolutely take it. There's a there's an argument, and Jim Moore's had it a number of times that when we stopped at ten, we were the best of a bad bunch. Nobody wanted to win the league. 
you know, every time there's an opportunity, the, the points weren't maximised. Yeah. Um, and, and this isn't a great Celtic side. And people will go on about, yeah, it's a treble winning side. Yeah, we have lost some bodies and we've not replaced them with sufficient quality. And we have spoken about uh, some of the longer term effects of not just the transfer window we've come out of, but the transfer windows before that. Um, and you're talking about guys like um, Juranovic and Yakamakis. Juranovic, has he been replaced with the same level of quality? Well, when things are good, I hear that he has. I hear that Johnson, uh, I've heard that Johnson's an upgrade. It depends on the perception uh, of that as well. Yakamakis, no, I don't think we have. I don't think we have replaced um, the big man up top. He's a type of guy in a game like today, you'd be screaming yeah. at this moment in time to get him on the park. You would yeah. be screaming for him to yeah. be on the park. Um, and you know that when he got on that park, it, the likelihood is that he would he would actually um, ragdoll them up top and he would really scare them and he would really pin them back and the chances are he would score. But um, yeah, it's not going to, as planned. And I think that Brendan Rodgers, um, rather than constantly going about quality, uh, we need to take responsibility and take ownership. The big thing's ownership, Ian. This is my team. I back them. I mean, um, you know, when you come in, if you were to say it's Noma team and, and the Noma signings, then you're not going to get anybody working for you. This is my team, and anything that happens, we're going to do it together, win, lose, and draw. Today, it looks like a, you know, it could be a long, long night for us, and it's unfortunate because we've been streaming since seven o'clock this morning, and uh, this Celtic side's not giving us any respite whatsoever. You. No, it's not. It's not. There's a, I don't know how far behind your stream is, but. Um... You see this, the, the the chance by O there. Well, Ose for me that he's the guy that we've been calling for him to get an opportunity in. But if you give him an opportunity, don't do it as I say in a like for like scenario. So there's there's loads that I like about O. Uh, there's the the obvious thing about he he does give you a different level of physicality um, than than Kyogo. Um, he is willing to to drop deep and and strike from range etc. But you need a clinical edge. This is what you need. You need a clinical edge. You could be, you could have one chance. That one chance changes the the, the game entirely. Um, so if you've got a situation where Hugo has been played through by Palma, or has been played through by Dyson Maida, listen, half chances. You've got to be clinical. I just don't think we're, we're clinical enough. What we're we going to do here? Bring Quan on to change the game. I know. Right. Yeah. Well, come on. See, we're snatching at things. We're. we're... Yeah, we're snatching at things, and it's like we're, we're not being calm in that in that final moment and losing the head. And that started early on as well. I don't know if you remember that sh that that sh wild shot that um, Taylor had in the first half. Um, yeah. And it's like snatching at things. That was that was that, I think that was still at no no when that happened. So that was just before the opener, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. So there's a. It's not just because we're losing. I think it's been it's the whole game we've had most of the play. But hearts are just soaking up, you know, and they know they know they're predicting what we're going to do. They've worked on it all week, clearly, because it's working. Um, so, um, here we go again, you know. It's like the, they've worked on it all week, Ian, and and even in game, even in match, mm -hmm. they've been able to look at the situation and say, um, you know, this is an easy team to play against. The Johnston yeah. coming off at half time is it a precautionary injury? Um, Turnbull coming off, never done a thing, never done a thing. I never heard his name until maybe five yeah. minutes before half time. He comes off for a striker, so you're changing the shape, like we oh. say. But Johnson's getting uh, taken off, and it's a like for like change for for Maida. So you're just hoping and praying that Maida's more creative and and um, can craft something that that Johnson was unable to do. But then the argument would be again Ian, that Johnson shouldn't be anywhere near the Celtic side at this stage. No, I, and I think Maeda, he's not, he's not the type of guy who's going to come in and change the game. He's, this is, this is, I would have thought um, Bernardo has probably got more of a chance of unlocking some stuff. And, you know, he's, he's more, he's more, he's more of the, uh, of the elk of O'Reilly. Bernardo, for me. You, you look at this team. Chicken, you know, and it's like, he's, he's a, he's a nuisance and he's a, but he's, 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 End product is not the best. A lot of the time. Talking, talking of which, talking of which, the end product of Kyogo um, in this game, two chances he's had. Uh, I, I mean, the second one, he's made it look as though it's no chance because it's been so wildly uh, struck over the bar. 
He's had two chances. He's always had a half chance. Um, Palmer had a chance in the first half that he should have scored, and Greg Taylor's had an opportunity. But the the quality hasn't been there. The quality of finishing, uh, the clinical edge hasn't been there. And uh, what, what you're looking at now is what what can these creative players do? So you've got Palmer on one wing, and you've got Mado on the other. Um, they can play to the strengths of Kyogo and O, but it looks as though both both those players need three chances to score a single goal. You know, because O's had one, Kyogo's had two, and and still... it's similar to the first half there. You see that in the Mac drive and run there, and he played my either through, but it's probably the worst player that could go through to. But he, he yeah. sent him wide. Um, but it's almost it's almost through frustration that McGregor's saying, "Listen, guys, this is what you need to do. You need to grab this yeah. game by yeah. the scruff of the neck." Where's your quality? Where's your quality on this pitch, right? Your quality is Matt O'Reilly. It's Kyogo Furuhashi. Listen, we've seen enough quality from Palmer to know that, that there's something there. Um, he's got something in his toolkit that he can he can craft a chance, he can score a goal. And we need to play to these strengths. How do we get the ball out to them? Well, Callum McGregor um, can get the ball to these players to make something happen. Um, the Burnaby defenders. Who's that, sorry? I think Burnaby's coming on. Right, so if Bernie becomes yeah, on, wow, for Palmer, Woo-hoo. so he's he's basically bringing on a left back and asking him to play left wing. I mean, what what it does say though is it says to Palmer, you've not been good enough. Mm-hmm. I would play somebody to position rather than have you on the park. I've just been talking about Palmer as being one of the creative players that can make something happen. Mind you, Bernie started out as a left winger, didn't he? Remember the goal he scored in pre season in mm-hmm. Japan. Yeah. He was playing like a left winger there as well. It's just yeah. you're throwing guys on. It's, it's got the look of desperation about it, Ian, isn't it? Yeah. It's got the look of desperation. Um, you're right about yeah, McGregor on two occasions today, uh, one in each half. He's he's driven on, and, and the ball carrying um, is a great way, obviously, of breaking the lines as well. Because it's not about this passing and allowing everybody to get back into position. Um, Callum McGregor's taken 30, 40 yard runs there to try and craft a chance open. Um, And I think also, again, I I sound like a broken record here, but our our centre-halves have got into the habit of playing safe passes. And one of the things Alan Morrison was talking about when it came to Lagerbjelk was he wasn't great at playing short passes. Uh, Jim Jim Moore couldn't believe it. He was like, it isn't a short pass easier to play than a long pass. Um, But it's about breaking the lines, isn't it? And Getting the ball in a position where you're able to pick out your wingers um, and it puts hearts on the back foot. How often have we seen them on the back foot, Ian, in this entire game? Not very often. Put them on the back foot so that uh, they're actually chasing. You want them to see your number. They're chasing your player. How often has that happened? Barely. They're just soaking up. They're just soaking up. It's just, it's, yeah, it's yeah. just easy for them. They've just, this is, they've worked on it, right? I sound like I've got, I know what, how, how hearts have trained all week, but it's pretty pretty obvious here. It's like they've they've worked on their shape, they're sticking to the game plan and it's working a treat because we're making it easy for them. Um I think any great team, you know you have to be able to have some different attributes in your you know in your, in your locker to, to be able to get a result and grind out result and because this is again teams do they are they do raise their games again when they play against Celtic and Rangers, you know uh, the same hearts team will probably go and get beat next week. You know, yeah, so- th- this this is true because the the actual quality isn't there, Ian. I, I think the issue is we are so easy to play against. We've been sussed yeah. out, and you know, I remember when uh, Jim Moore and I used to speak about Brendan Rodgers, um, and I think it was uh, when he when he left the club, and we were talking about elite managers. What is an elite manager? What's the definition of an elite manager? And um, you know. The type of manager Brendan is, and you, you've you written about him, you've looked back at his time at Liverpool. Um, he's, he's the type of guy who loves to develop uh, players. He's got a real thorough um, approach to work, whereby he works with dossiers, presentations. He can explain to you how a team's going to set up and how your team's going to beat them. But I'm not seeing it in practice, Ian. All I'm seeing is theory. I'm not seeing anything in practice. And to turn around and say we need more quality, you could say that in any aspect of life. It's a very broad statement, isn't it? Yeah. Um, why why aren't you getting X, Y, or Z result? I just need more quality. Anybody in any industry on the planet could say that. 
you're not giving me the quality. And 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 I think what will happen is you then get a situation where the board will try and, and uh, back themselves and say, well, you've spent X amount of money. You've claimed all the players were yours. Mm-hmm. And we're now in a very difficult situation. It's, it's actually now getting to that concerning point. And as I say, I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm not even throwing in the towel in this game, as bad as the performance has been. Mm-hmm. But at what point do we start talking about Brendan? Because I backed him for day one. I backed him to the hill. Yeah, I, I have as well. Um, we all have bad days at the office. And it, but it's clear this is not just a bad day at the office. This is, this is a, there's, a, yeah. there's something not right within the culture. And maybe... maybe Again, I can only speculate. Maybe it's like we'll get to January when, he, when he's been pains to talk about trimming the squad. Maybe he needs to get rid of some of the, some of Andy's players or some of the fringe players. You never know what's happening backstage in terms of you know cliques or people who are you know affecting morale or whatever it might be. Um, so it needs it needs a cleansing in January. I think. He, he deserves that, you know, and, and 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 we'll see how we sort of kick on for the re- for the rest of the season um, next in twenty twenty four. Yeah, Ange yeah. Similar passage, mm-hmm. you know, but Ange didn't Ange didn't whinge about it or kind of, you know, Ange just got on with it. Um, were we top of the league in January when Ange first? Because we weren't. We, we, I can't remember how we, how we went into Christmas under Ange the first season. Well, I always remember um, all season, actually, right up to Christmas and New Year, Kevin Graham saying, Ian, as long as we're in touching distance, as long mm-hmm. as we're in touching distance. And then, of course, what happened is he brought in some real quality from yeah, a match right. that, that was very, very specific to him. Yeah. Um, you know, he knew the Japanese game inside and out, and he was able to pluck certain players from that game. By the way, only 50% of them has worked out, actually, for the club. But when yeah. it's worked out, it's worked out really, really well. Yeah. And I think... You know, that discussion where you say we need to talk about Ange, um, you do it in such a way where, listen, I'm seeing comments in there saying get get him out. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But this is a collective responsibility. Everybody needs to accept that responsibility. Otherwise, it goes back to that narcissism I'm talking about with regards to the culture, Ian, where, no, 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 it's not your fault. It's this guy's fault or it's their fault. Um, and that's not just the management of the team. That that's going back to the fact that we're locking fans out of games. Um, if the Green Brigade were in today, I'm not saying that we'd we'd be winning the game. I'm just saying there's so much disjointed and wrong at the moment. Mm-hmm. And you ask yourself, how can that happen after a treble winning season? I mean, listen, we're a football club, right? That is far more powerful than any any individual. Anybody that's left this football club will manage to, to, to handle it and overcome it, Ian. Um, and we lost a manager, really, to players. You're, you're telling me we've not got a good enough squad to beat Kilmarnock or, or Hearts at home? Because I'm not buying that. I'm sorry, I'm not buying it. You could take the, the transfer window that we're moaning about saying there isn't enough quality and Hearts are probably not spent that money in 20 years. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd need to do my sums on that one, but it, I wouldn't be far off it. I mean, the last time a football club outside Celtic and Rangers spent a million quid on a player, I think, was Paul Bernard from when, when Oldham sold him to Aberdeen. Mm-hmm. And that was in the 1990s. So nobody's spending money to that degree. It's just a obnoxious waste of money if we can't then put a team together to beat Hearts or St. Johnston at home or Motherwell at home uh, or Kilmarnock away. Um, and people go, oh, it's only one game, you know, dry your eyes, you've never seen this, you've never seen that. Well, I have. I have seen really bad Celtic teams. I've seen really, really good Celtic teams. And I can identify sometimes when things are going awry. Two league defeats back to back, Ian, there's something wrong. Uh, so we need to talk about every single aspect of it. I'm watching a group of players here just, just now who they don't even seem to care. And that worries me. Yeah. Liam Scales would run through a brick wall for you. Great. Yeah. And he's got the talent to match, but there's players on that pitch that I don't think are up to the up to the challenge here. They really they don't seem up to the challenge for me. No, no, um, yeah, it's yeah, it's odd, it's odd, really. Um, but we can't win every game, right? We can't win every game, and it's over a it's over a season, and. Um, 
I still think we've got enough to win the league. Um, obviously, right enough, if we play like this all every, every week, then we won't. Um, but I think there's been a like enough enough to show right over 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 the sort of the course the course of the season that we've got enough to win the league. Um, but it shouldn't be this tight. It shouldn't be this close. I think that um, we could we could be light years ahead of Rangers because they're our closest rivals. Let's be honest. I we could be light, light years ahead. Aye. I, yeah. I agree yeah. that we could. We're not, I we're, totally not, agree. We're, not, we're not burying them. So I, I don't. I think it suits. It's not. You know, Sky TV would just make it really dull and boring if Celtic just swatted everyone away. It's not to say that we spend loads of money. We got it right. We still may fall flat, but the chances are that if we actually went right, stuff this. Allah, when they knocked us out of the uh, of the of the cup on the dialer, mm-hmm. and apparently it was the celebrating directors that. And sends to uh, Dermot Desmond to go and get Brendan that day. Um, how much of this football will will Dermot Desmond have to, I suppose, swallow before endure. you know and endure? Yeah, sorry, uh, uh, and before he gets annoyed, thinking right, well, we need to go and spend some money, um, but not spread betting, not spreading it out, and it's just. Um, was it Lawwell? Do you think who could have who who um, adopted the the, the moneyball approach initially? Yeah, I, I just think that you know I, I look back to the um, the financial results that were released. I think in September it was Arian, uh, and I read with interest the chairman's report, the chairman's statement, uh, talking about how the recruitment strategy has fared them well. And I'm, I'm going to go back to the narcissistic approach, whereby how dare you? question our recruitment strategy and I've been asked the question Ian, what do you know about recruitment? Mm-hmm. Nothing absolutely nothing but what I can tell you is when we buy a player who's no good enough for Celtic Football Club what I can tell you is that there's a guy on the bench right now Kwon, who we plucked from South Korean Division 2 obscurity and every single body on that bench on days like today there can be no prisoners you need somebody yeah. to come on and make a difference. And Brendan Rodgers knows that because what he keeps doing at the moment is he keeps looking within. We've utilised players like Mikey Johnston um, from within the club, Stephen Welsh other night, centre-half, Jamesy Forrest. I would need to check, but I think he's played more football at this stage of this season than if you were to compare it to last season. He's played a lot of football, started games. Um, and there are others. Mitchell Frame, absolutely brilliant to see him making his debut. But that what that says is the guys that have been getting brought in over a number of transfer windows simply are not good enough. So you can write it in his uh, his chairman's statement. There's a, two types of player that we sign. One of them is a guy that you can develop and sell on at optimum at the optimum time for the optimum price. Mm-hmm. And this is a this is a strategy that has fared as well. Yeah, it's fared as well. But how many duds have we had in the process? Yeah. How many duds have we had? Um, now, some of the some of the names linked to Celtic in the summer were undoubtedly quality players. There's absolutely no guarantee they would have um, done a ton for you, Ian. But uh, if you buy quality goods, the chances are that they'll do a better job in any walk of life, right? Yeah. Um, you know, when it came to the, the goalkeeper scenario, everybody knew that we needed to challenge left back. Everybody knew we needed to challenge. Centre forward, we've been talking about it since Joey Dawson played at McDermott Park on Boxing Day two years ago. And we're still running with the bare bones of the strikers. It's totally unacceptable. The, the, the squad management has been abysmal over the last few seasons. I keep going on about it. 32 players. That means you've got half the squad unhappy, Ian. That then feeds into the culture. I've just seen a, a couple of minutes ago, Burnaby lauded for being the first Argentinian to play for Celtic. Couldn't he control the ball? Couldn't he pull the ball in the air? Yeah. Couldn't control the ball. I seen it against uh, Kilmarnock for the. You know, we played until over a hundred minutes on the clock. You know, you had like seventeen minutes to try and pull something back for that game, and there was a moment where we couldn't even keep the ball in the park. Ian, it kept going out for a throw-in. Came back in, couldn't keep the possession back out for another throw-in. We couldn't create anything, and there wasn't enough on the park to take ownership of the situation, and that's why Rogers is saying, "Well, I need to turn to." Uh, James Forrest. I need to turn to Mikey Johnson. These are guys whose time at Celtic, you know, if they've not already came to an end, it should be very much cameo appearances, but we're counting on them for starts in the Champions League. Yeah. 
Um, he needs, we talked about Chris Sutton before. How how we're crying out for a for a leader like you know um, Chris um, and his, his ilk. You know, it's like harking back to Martin O'Neill did it all the time. He would sign big personalities, um, and there's no personality that I can see. You've got like Cal Mac, correct? Um, but that snatched it unlucky here. Um, but we need some we need some grown ups. We need some we need some maturity um, at that at that that right point in in our career. We need some experience, I think, to come up. Um, so, picture the scene, Ian. Sorry to butt in, right? But I'm going back to this recruitment thing because it bugged me when I questioned it. I, I was asked the question, "What do you know about recruitment?" <laughs> I, I know it's not working. Um, and then, as I say, it puts that pressure on the recruitment team to to uh, justify their existence. How would they do that? They'll sell somebody for a huge profit. Well, that, that for me, is the wrong approach because then you're weakening the side that we've got. But you're selling it for a huge profit to say, look, it is working. Yeah. And what you're then left with is one less quality player. What do I know about recruitment? Well, the guy that is at the head of recruitment, what does he know? That's my counter now. What does he know? Because I'm seeing a left back coming in there in, in Burnaby getting thrown on at left wing. And he should never be anywhere near a Celtic side. And he was signed three transfer windows ago, Ian. You know, I'm seeing a situation where we were in a an absolute crisis at the back and we brought in Nat Phillips from Liverpool and he's barely, barely kicked the ball. But the stats would tell you that he wasn't going to play much football. But when I brought that up, I was asked on social media, if, if, if I was being negative, why are you having a dig at a Celtic player? He was the wrong signing, that's why. He was the wrong signing. He hardly played football before he signed for Celtic. Lo and behold, he's barely played football now. Ose had two chances since he came on. Uh, Kilgore's had two chances in the game. Four chances that have f- fallen to our strikers. All of them in the box, Ian. Four chances in the box, no goals. So is it the quality or is it the confidence at this moment in time? Because I think they're both quality players. Yeah, I think it's a bit of both. Um, but the confidence is, is not there because they're not they're not trusting... They're not. They're, they're, they're not. They're, they're snatching at stuff. They've, been, they've done that the whole game. There's a there's a jittery, a jittery, or a jittery, jitteriness. If that's even a word. Um, it is now. Sorry. It is now. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. There's, there's there's not that calmness and there's not that trust in trust in the plan, trust in the process, like we did on the range. Um. And like we did under Brendan, sort of in his first season, our first couple of seasons, um, it's, it is what it is. It is what it is. You know, it's it's it's. Um, we're not. We're not. If we get anything out of this game today, it's not being deserved at all. You know, and Hearts. The, the, the biggest thing is Hearts have had to do nothing to get to get this two set of pieces. Sorry. Yeah. Exactly. You know. I mean, I say they've had to do nothing. They've worked really hard. To their game plan, and they're working really hard off the ball, and they're just mate, right, they're just packing it out. They're, you know, I'm just packing it out again, you know, and it's just the same, just clearing it, and then we and, and rinse and repeat. Yeah, and I we're, think we're, we're bereft of ideas. Yeah, we are, and you're talking about um, hearts having done nothing, but the, the, the things that they've done and they've done well, you would suggest that. Um, that's the kind of thing that's a prerequisite at this level. Everything that they've done and done well, you would say that that's what I would expect. That's what I would expect you to do. You don't have to be a great side to do it. Um, and they have done it well, and we've not. We've done the simple things wrong, and we've done it badly. Yeah. Um, and all of a sudden, you think to yourself, well, if Rogers can get a, a tune out of the team when they're really not playing well against St. Johnson, he can do it again. He can do it again. But what you and I kept saying was, there's only so many times you can use that kind of magic power because it, it absolutely is diminished uh, very, very quickly. And they've tried again uh, at half time. I would guess. I don't know what the, the post-match presser is going to tell us. And I've not seen a reaction. I've seen a, a team in hearts who are quite comfortable right now. Yeah. It's no wave after wave after attack, is it? It's not like oh. I can see any of our forwards giving one of the hearts players an absolute torrid time yet. Yeah. You know, the ball goes out wide. We play it in, it's defended. Even when it has fallen to O and Kyogo, and there's four occasions that I've counted, 
We're not mm. clinical enough anyway. So it's not even as if they've got to be that good, Ian, to prevent us from delivering the ball in, which we have done, um, and getting on the end of these balls, because we've been doing it. But we're simply not good enough. And I don't want to hear about margins after the game. I don't want to hear about it just being one of the days, because there's been far too many of those days this season. And it's the quality of the other sides that's prevented us from having even more defeats. Hibs away, uh, St. Johnston at home, Motherwell at home. These are games that... Uh, if they were clinical in a set piece, we get beat. I remember at the very end, it was two saved by Joe Hart. It saved us against St. Johnston at home. Yeah, they had two very good chances near the end of the game. Joe Hart made two very good saves. Yeah. And um, otherwise, the whole thing's looking even worse. Um, people are going on about McGregor's role this season. Ian. How, how do you feel about McGregor? Is he being deployed properly? Do you think he's been as effective as in previous seasons? Uh, well, no, but he's a, he's he's in a team that's that's not completely confident or or, or connected. Um, I'm not. He's been a shining light. I think this this season really. He's, he's had he's he's had a couple more. Maybe he's had maybe had two or three six out of tens when he was always a, a solid seven or eight out of ten every week, um, which is not like him. But I think that's more down to the fact that the players around him and he's he's kind of you know, and he's human. <laughs> Um, is probably more the, uh, the the answer to that question. Um, we're, you know, seen it, we're just snatching at things now. It's just it's just completely out of ideas. Um, mm -hmm. And it's and we're, as well, we're, not, we're, not, and we're knocking it in high, and it's like they're just they're just mopping it all up. We need to keep the the, the ball on the deck, and just just a simple passive moving, quick feet, just passive move. That's the only way we're going to try and get. Get anything out of this game, um, and yeah. but we're just lumping things in. People are, and it's like snatching at shots. You've, we're, we're, making, we're carving up a half chance, and it's getting you know for a fact it's gonna get blocked before they even shoot. And they're just snatching at it. Maeda did that before, um, and it was all the foot was already out to block it before he even connected with the ball. You know, it, it's football intelligence again. You know, it's like it's it's um, just be calm. We can, you know. Um, if we lose Absolutely. the game, fair enough. Like, this is make your mistakes now, you know. If we if we lose another two to a couple of goals, you know, so what, man? Just but stop, stop taking a bit more risk. No, this is the thing as well. You know, you, you talk about uh, taking a risk. There's a there's a risk taker in Rio Atati, and he started off the season on the bench. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, and I remember it being a, a massive point of discussion, a bone of contention, actually, uh, on Axon, because um, he's the type of guy that you expect to make the difference. He's a he's a he's a game changer. He's a he's a match winner. He's a playmaker. He's all of these things, right? But he, he takes risks, Ian. He takes yeah. risks, and um, the risk takers in, in modern football seem to be getting diminished and snuffed out. Oh, they seem to be because it's almost as if, right, if you take a risk, we might lose possession. Rule number one, never never lose possession. Therefore, guys like Hitati was were, were out of favour at the beginning of the season for a player like Turnbull, who whose defensive qualities were, were virtually non-existent. And it's not really worked out. I know somebody can come back to me and say, look at his goals to games ratio from midfield, etc. <laughs> Great. But as well as that, Ian, you see performances like we've seen today. Absolute anonymity from David Turnbull today. Anonymity. I'm looking at... Uh, Okay, I'm now the, the body language expert again. I'm looking <laughs> at a defeated figure in Brendan Rodgers on that sideline. You know what it must be like where, and again, in all walks of life, we love uh, music, we love football. And there's a point where you rely on somebody just to come up with the goods. You know what I mean? It's like the your favourite band. You just know that the, the songwriter can come up with another hit can come up with another great album. They'll come up with something, right? Because they're great, they're gifted, they know what they're doing. And I think that what happens in a football team is you often over-rely on people to constantly come up with the goods. I'm looking yeah. at Rodgers at the moment and I don't think he's got the answers. He hasn't. That's that's. And I think the, the players are doing that on the pitch as well. You know, they're kind of like when it, the chips are down, they're looking to Calmac or where they, they should be looking to themselves and they should be taking that pressure off Calmac. Um O'Reilly as well, you know. O'Reilly's had a quiet night, a quiet day today. Um, but yeah, when you, it's like we said before about the Green Brigade, we've become over reliant on them to create an atmosphere. We shouldn't be doing that. 
you know, they should be. And when they're not there, look look at all the all, all the empty seats. Players leaving early, you know, and it's like we used to take the Mickey out of Rangers fans for all the, all the blue seats, you know, mid game or, or or you know, quarter of an hour to go and things, but doing exactly the same. That's not back yeah. the teams leaving. Yeah, we are, we are, and and again, and I might, I might uh, add uh, the the latest chance for Kugel probably wasn't a, an ideal chance for him. I know he's not really known for his aerial prowess, Ian, but three chances in the box. We were complaining about his lack of opportunity in the box and the lack of uh, delivery that he was getting from the the wingers. Because when a player like that's uh, form drops off the side of a cliff, you're looking for all the different reasons. Why? Why is that happening? Maybe maybe it's no Kyogo. Maybe it's the, the guys running about him. Have we changed our shape? Is he getting enough uh, distribution from the wingers? And I, I was really interested with the start. Again, Alan Morrison's getting a lot of uh, shout-outs because I think sometimes the, 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 the data answers the question. And he was telling me that uh, Yang and Palma had played all season four balls to Kyogo into the box. Four. Now, I, I've counted today Kyogo receiving three in <coughs> the box against Feyenoord. Uh, in the first half, you're talking five or six deliveries where he's got the ball in the box, Ian. So at first you're thinking Kyogo's this phenomenal, talismanic uh, force up top for Celtic. One of the best strikers we've had in 20 years. The best since last time. I've heard it all, right? All the platitudes. So it must be somebody else's fault, right, that he's not playing well. Is it the gaffer's fault? Are we deploying him properly? Gaffer comes out and says, I've not told him to play any different. Is it the wingers' fault? They're not giving them the ball enough. Well, maybe up until a certain point. But he's had the ball enough against Feyenoord and he's had the ball enough against Hearts and he's still no scoring goals. How do you explain that? Didn't the same thing happen with E. Griffiths? Yeah. He was, he was at 50-odd goals the season yep. before. And then he came in and he was like, he sank without a trace, almost. 42 goals. Um, I was talking about this because he's up there, Ian, with... with Celtic royalty when it comes to goal scoring because only seven players, only seven, have scored 40 or more goals for Celtic in a season. And you're talking Jimmy McGrory, Henrik Larson, Brian McLear, Kenny Dalglish, Charlie Nicholas, Joe McBride, that level, Bobby Lennox, that level of player. Lee Griffiths got himself into that uh, that category, but um, a completely different force, obviously. I think Lee Griffiths, if, he, if he was a different character, would he have been, would he have been the same player? But imagine if he was more, more of a, more of a, a professional. What, what he could have done in his career, you know. Um, but then you think about, was it like a marker? It's like you know when Brendan's coming in, right? You're, you're, you're the cock of the the, the, the team. Knock him down. Um, is that the same with Kyogo? <laughs> I don't know. This is like there was a spirit. massive turning point. You remember but, the big, the big turning point? Where... Like you know, it, yeah. Um, but then we, you know, was it not? He felt that we were too over reliant on. He wanted to spread the goals around the team. Aye, Good. Aye. Why not spread the goals around the team, but keep your your your, your striking scoring forty goals as well? <laughs> or, or let's make sure we're still scoring the goals. I I yeah. will nullify our, our main goal threat, but we'll stop scoring goals. That's what's happened now. I remember the game. Um, we were absolutely pumped, Rangers, and um, the big man. Then Bailey scores a hat trick, the perfect hat trick, and he was only in the team because of the. Uh, the very, very late call-off by Lee Griffiths, who wasn't fit to play. And even after the game, I think it was Luke Shanley was uh, interviewing Brendan Rodgers after the game for Sky Sports, and they uh, opened up the conversation by saying, Lee who? Tongue-in-cheek. And Brendan defended Lee Griffiths. But that was a massive turning point in that game because oh. Dembele up to that point wasn't your first pick. He certainly was after it. And I don't think in um, and, and all the time that Dembele was at the club, he was never the first pick after that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a depressing day today, actually. Um, and, and that is in the midst of us setting up a 24-hour charity drive, which we will continue with because we don't throw the towel in. And uh, absolutely not. And I can understand the fans' frustrations. And I'm hoping that um, Celtic as a football club are able to um, sort out the rift that currently exists between the ultras of the boys and the Green Brigade uh, so because we need every single ounce of positive uh, influence and energy in the stadium right now, Ian, because what I'm seeing is pretty grim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. I suppose we've got a responsibility to try and try and be 
be buoyant and, and, and upbeat. And I'm going to be that as well. I'm going to I'm going to try. It's just what this happening, disappointing. But we've got to keep the faith. We've got to we've got to keep the faith, and we've got to count our blessings rather than you know. I suppose, and I don't mean to be delusional. And I don't mean just like heads so everything is everything is rosy. We know it's not rosy, but if we the chinks when the chinks appear in, in the armory, right? You know, you can repair it, right? But if it, another chink happens, another chink happens, you know, it's holes in the boat, you know. And we let's not be another hole in the boat. Um, let's be, let's 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 help them try and plug it by 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 spreading some positivity, you know. Like we're still here, you know, although those fans have gone home now. They're on the cars and they're in the pub, and the game's potentially still listening. Home. Potentially listening to this on the way home. Yeah, um, yeah, well, um, yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't. I'm not knocking people for doing that. So it's your, your choice, you know. And I, I've left games early oh, before to try and get traffic. Hundred percent. I'm sitting here. I'm not at the game. Um, so I'm not criticising anybody. And the thing is, as well, Ian, um, about the positivity. What I try to do is. If you pinpoint something, so if I'm going to make a point right now about the performance of an individual player, what I'll try and do at the end of that, without the expertise of a, a master tactician, is I will try and offer a solution. This is what went wrong. This is maybe what we could do to make it right. Why are we not doing this? Because we, we were doing that with Kyogo all season. We weren't just saying, Kyogo's playing rotten. Let's write him off. We were saying, right, why is he playing rotten? Why, why is it not the same? We did it with Joe Hart at the beginning of the season. We've been doing it all season with um, Greg Taylor. Listen, the result of that might be the, the guy gets replaced. Mm -hmm. That might be the result of it, but you've got to look at every possibility. Um, Celtic at this moment in time have been well beaten by Hearts. Hearts deserve the win. I don't think they've been anything special, but uh, with two set pieces, they've been absolutely clinical. Absolutely clinical. And we've not. I mean, I was counting the chances that I think our strikers have had five, talking Owen Kyogo, five in the box. Um, we haven't scored the goal. And that's simply not good enough. It's not clinical enough. Um, who you know? Who do you look at today and say they get pass marks, Ian? What players get pass marks for you today? I mean, not many, not any, really. Um, McGregor. Um, Liam Scales, I'd say. Liam Scales has been the man of the match for me, um, which tells its own story. Um, he's not really done a lot wrong scales. Um, again, the only ten things he's done wrong is like it's kind of he's he's, he's recovered. He's he's made a mistake or he's he's kind of and he's he's, he's made a recovery, mm -hmm. which is uh, real fair. And I used to do that a lot and made a career out of it. <laughs> um, so he's that was. But I think Liam Scales pass marks for me today. Um, best of a bad bunch. What about you? Yeah, I was thinking skills. I, I do think that um, I'm going to have another look at the um, the first goal. Oh, it's not another day. <laughs> My head has just missed a almost, almost certain. It's, yeah. it's coming back to being clinical, isn't it? Uh, when you get the chance, you've got it's got to count. It's got to count. Um, skills. I was trying to do that though, stretching, and he just misses it. You know. Um, I, know. I know. Is it a timing thing? I, don't I think it is a timing thing. I, I just, I just, it, it's got, it's too often for it not to be. We were, uh, remember, he scored a hat trick in the first half against Yokohama at the beginning of the season, um, and we're all thinking he was a centre forward all of a sudden. It's been a, it's been a tough season for him, but through injury. But um, oh, yeah, yeah. skills, skills. Yeah, I would like to see him for the first goal. Uh, I'd like to analyse yeah. the opening goal. I don't think we defended well. And it's definitely on his side. I would need to see if it was his man that was lost. Other than that, other than that, and that's a big moment. Uh, I think he's been really composed and pretty solid because Hearts haven't been a, an attacking force. I know that sounds daft. Two set no, pieces, two goals. You know, not needed so like, no, no, no periods of pressure. Uh, it doesn't win your games, Ian. But you know, eighty percent possession or whatever it might be doesn't win you a game of football. Like you want to do something with it? Put it in the ball, put the ball in the net. Yeah. Cliche, it's cliche bingo um, again, you know. Um, which I'm guilty of quite a lot, I suppose. But oh man, it's, it's true. <laughs> it's I was true. talking, yeah. well, at, at the moment, we're looking at 77 percent 19 shots and goal from Celtic versus five from Hearts, five on target, which is really poor, really poor return. Uh, against two shots on target by Hearts, and obviously, we know what happened to them 18 corners against three. You know, it's just absolute pressure and possession 
equals mm. a two nothing defeat. So why why the onus on that? I thought we 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 got rid of the shackles at, um, against Feyenoord. We played with mm. more freedom. It was it was open. Aye, you know you, you left just your, your back door open a wee bit as well though, and you might have conceded a goal, but. We looked like we could score a goal. Today, we've, we've not looked like we could score a goal, Ian. We're back to that same boring, kind of passive, possession, 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 possession is king. But it's not getting us anywhere. You know, we're so predictable. So predictable. There's nothing happening out of the ordinary. What happened against Feyenoord out of the ordinary? That skill by Matt O'Reilly for the winning goal. That was that was out of the ordinary, wasn't it? It was extraordinary. Yeah, it was individual, skill. individual brilliance. And we've yeah. not run done by individual errors as well. But when, you, when you've got... Um, oh, do you know what, right? How about this for synchronicity? We've got the private chat here, right? And I'll take a picture of it. And <laughs> my, my, I had my phone resting on the on the on the laptop. You couldn't see it in, in shot. And bizarrely, right, my my phone is spelled out the word poo <laughs> just by touching there the keyboard. So I've there you go. They're, the list, they're listening to us, Ian. The, through mobile phones, they're, t they're sending messages uh, subliminally. Um, I'm going to take a picture, think... honestly, so, so, so it's true. Um, but, like, you know, um, I wouldn't be so so childish as to use such a, a term to, to, to describe the performance today, but it was poo. Yeah, I think um, that 2,000-word blog I was asking for for the post-match, just scrap that, right, and just send that <laughs> one word blog um our way it's another defeat yeah I'm it was pure blogging right. <laughs> i'm going to be getting stick for saying that shanklin shouldn't be anywhere near a celtic jersey and i get it and i don't change my mind on that you might think i'm stubborn i don't think that's the way forward what we're going to do in the post-match uh we've got 17 minutes uh left obviously we've been streaming since uh, i think the back of two on, on the game uh, we, we, we suffered it with you, uh, we suffered it all the way through and there's going to be people tuning in on their way home from the game, uh, my brother for example who's who's through there uh, with, my, with my ticket and all the rest of it, so if you're listening on the way back, it's not about going in studs up, it's about trying to figure out what is going wrong with Celtic right now and how on earth can we put it right, um, I've heard people on online, Big Yogi was saying online, getting Maeda Abad and Hatati back is not a magic wand. The, and I've heard other people saying a January transfer window is not a magic wand. Ian, I think we're clutching on them. You know what, what I mean? Like a life jacket in a storm, thinking that, oh, they're going to make it all right. Get the get injured players back, get two or three guys in equality, everything's going to be all right. Is that enough? That team's devoid of any kind of confidence out there. It, it lacked heart today, but... It it lacked heart, but also again, it was. I keep saying it, but it was like, it was, it was panic, um, snatched. You know, there was there was a lot. Of, there was a lot of possession. We could see a lot of decent moves. Hearts just pre obviously predicted it and 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 just nullified it. Um, but we were we weren't playing as we as we can play. Uh, you know, pound for pound, we're a better team than Hearts on any given day. But we were snatching at things once, once it was like nosebleed time, you know, and and and, and kind of like losing the head um, when ordinarily perhaps that wouldn't have happened. Um, but that was that was from almost the first whistle, and it was it was the first the first one was was uh, Taylor's ballooned it over the bar, you know, um, when he, a, a pass, a pa another, and he did another pass, and I, I I get frustrated. I don't know if I, I'm sure a lot of fans do as well that we're taking about five at least five or even sometimes 10 more passes than we would have done under Ange. And that wasn't, we weren't a long ball team under Ange, but we we got, the, the whole point was to score goals and, and, and annihilate teams. Um, so if we if we take more passes to, to, to achieve the same result, then we've become more predictable. Totally. You know? And, and it, them time, then, give them time to get their shape back in. Absolutely. Unless you're an Atletico Madrid or a Barcelona, where you've got, such a high level of player, they can ping the ball about and do it in 50 passes. But by the time they've done 50 passes, it takes us, you know, we'll have done 15, such as the speed. And you, that, that, and that only comes with the class, the class of the player. You know, the, and the movement off the ball is so important. Mm. And we're not doing that. You know, it's it's almost like musical statues. Um. So I'm not going to go and studs up. I'm not going to be, you know, it's a bad day at the office. Uh, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to be all kind of like 
you know, telling lies. You know, we all saw it. Um, so it's one of those days. I still believe in. I, I believe we've got the best manager we could we could get. I think my 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 IRA is is more directed at at, at the at the guys above Brendan. Um, and I said before as well, like you know, you, what, there's no point in bringing in a, a guy of his caliber and then micromanaging him or not not allowing him to do his do his stuff. So let him sort out the coat, the, the the recruitment side. Let him let let him carve it in his own image. You know, um, he's he does he's, he did bring in a, a Premier League mentality. Um, and you know, there's a lot of things that they do right down there. A lot of things they do wrong. I don't agree with, but you know, in terms of that kind of homogenized, sterile kind of approach, you know, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but but you know, let him do it, and then let him let him fall flat if it's if it's not going to work. But I think he's 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 got the. Uh, He's got the credentials to, to, to do that and, and improve things. But that's going to take investment, you know. He's got, he's got to spend money. It is going to take investment. And I think that uh, some of these worries that we've got, you would hope that the uh, the number crunchers or the bean counters have got similar concerns going into the January transfer window. I mean, what is it going to take to, to sort it out? Some people in the, the comment section are going in studs up. We're going to get as many comments as we can. The first one that's going to come in, you might have noticed that we are on all weekend. We are raising funds for an amazing cause. It's we, Jamie Tierney. Uh, you can click on the link underneath. It's a GoFundMe link. Or there's various ways on YouTube that you can make a payment. And that normally comes to us as an axiom to obviously help build the channel. Every penny over the weekend that, that is paid in that way will go to we, Jamie Tierney. The reason I'm saying it is look at that. You and Boy Martin, um, you would be forgiven for no feeling great at this moment in time after that performance. You've just donated 50 quid and you did promise to donate it if we came back to win the game. But I want to focus back on what this weekend is about and all the good we as fans can do. Celtic is everything, but so is the values of our club. Ewan, we're talking about being disappointed in the negativity that often follows that, my friend, is an amazing gesture. And it is a wee bit of uh, positivity and perspective as well. So thank you very much, you and Martin, for it. Um, Chris, the Celtic guy, chucks in a couple of quid into the pot as well. This is more entertaining than watching Celtic. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to be here until quarter past. And then on the channel, before we get stuck into some of your comments, um, on the channel, on the YouTube channel, we have an exclusive interview with three Celtic players, Pierre Van Hoydonk, George Cadet, John Collins. Met up with the guys on Halloween night. Um, in Glasgow, did an interview. And what I've done is I've put it up on the channel, even though it's not been properly edited. So you know what? It's the rough, roughest hell, roughest toast version. There might be a wee bit of dodginess with the sound to begin with. Let it ride. It'll sort itself out in the five minutes or so afterwards. And some of the shots might not be well lit. Somebody might be playing Dirty Old Town in the pub uh, behind us and we tell them to shut up. Doesn't matter. Just enjoy it. And then I'll give you the fully edited version at a later date. It's just all about getting the content out tonight. So apologies. Um, I do have OCD when it comes to quality control. Feed the bear. You also throw in a fiver. Thank you very much. All this is going to be going to wee Jamie Tierney, who has got Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and it costs his family 60 grand a year to send them for treatment all over the world. Another tenor from Ewan, which is just sensational. Thank you for your response. How do you feel after that? What can we do to put it right? Is Brendan Rodgers, indeed, the man to do it. Is the magic wand of the injured players and also the uh, transfer window going to put this right? Or do you have deeper concerns? Let me know, because it seems to me as though there are some deep undercurrents at the moment, some real issues. Mr Celtic 12, this is simply not good enough. We've had that as well. Five pounds from yourself. Thank you very much. Um, Ian, it's, it's too soon because... You don't at this stage throw in the towel where the uh, plan that you've made with regards to the manager who's in place. Um, you've got to say, right, we're in this for the long run. This isn't about a knee-jet reaction. A lot of people in, are in there saying, Brendan, it's not working. Get rid of them. I'm going to have to say we can't do that at this stage because that will make things even worse. You bring somebody else in, Ian, who might want a different backroom team or you don't bring anybody in. And John Kennedy runs with it till the end of the season. How's that going to be better than what we've got at the moment? I don't see that as being the solution, Ian. What's your take? No, I think I just said before my take. I think it's 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 not the manager that needs to get be changed. It's it's certainly individuals on the board. 
that need to be refreshed. Um, they've brought great success. They're living in their echo chamber um, um, and they're congratulating themselves on past glories and any great club, any great, you know, empire was always forward thinking, was always progressive. Mm -hmm. That's how they, that, that's how they remain at the top. That's how, that's how any great dynasty happens. You know, it's, it's, it, you, you remain at the top by being ahead of your rivals, um, and being able to see over the, the brow of the hill what's coming. Um, but we, we're not doing that. We're congratulating ourselves at that level. That's what you said before, but you know, you're asked to be, what do you know about recruitment or fans? It's like when you go to a restaurant, if you got a bad meal and you complain, what does that mean? Like the chef can just say, well, you're not a chef. You know, it's, it's so true. It's so true. I am terrible at trade. Don't ask me to do anything that involves plumbing work, joinery, sparky work. I'm yeah. useless. So you pay somebody to come in. But as the consumer, you can still say, wait a minute, that's rubbish. It's no working. Yeah, the radiator's, no, the radiator's still cold. You can Aye. still have that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. In all so walks of life here. So, so it's not, it's not a, a question of getting rid of Brendan. It's like you brought this elite guy in. Don't, don't, don't inhibit him. You know, let him, let him, give him, up, give him the tools to, in which to do his job. Then, if it still doesn't work, then you you, you replace the manager, and it's not worked out. But I think, well, definitely in our favour. I don't think Brendan would have come back if it wasn't the opportunity to come and re repair the the relationship with the fans and to you know his, his his reputation was tarnished by leaving the club. Um, Maybe this is now is, is 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 highlighting the fact that why he left, and it was it wasn't the fact that it was just he was desperate to get out of Celtic because he could see that he could see the um, what was coming, or whether it you know whether it needed a refresh a refreshment, and um, he knew it wasn't going to be he wasn't going to be backed um, the way he wanted to be, and it, that was highlighted with some of the players that were being brought in. He's not in charge, and I think like you look at Alex Ferguson, you know the Shankleys and and the Busbys and all the, and the Steens. They had such a strong grip on the club, you know, and and they were for the club. They weren't just about themselves; they were for the club, and that worked in the club's favour. Um, I think Brendan is, is a similar character, where he's for the club because he knows he, he can build a club. And I'm, you know, I'm speaking for him here, so I'm, I'm only surmising. But it's, he knows that if he builds a club, it's sustainable. It's it's legacy that he's going to leave behind when he does leave eventually, um, and it's not just a short term. Attitude and a short-term plan and philosophy. Um, so, yeah, we need to get to January, give them a chance, but don't don't just give them some money and sign some players, and it's still within this framework that exists, where this echo chamber of the of the, of the top brass are calling the shots and and, and 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 slapping each other in the back. I'd like to see a bit of a change, a bit of a freshen up, and that comes down to Dermot Desmond ultimately. You know, it's 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 he's the main man. Um, and I can't see him, him doing that. I think he's he's obviously quite happy. Um, and I'm not trying to knock. I'm not trying to jump on the bandwagon here and sort of and, and, and kick Peter Lawwell. Peter Lawwell's done a phenomenal job. He's done a phenomenal job over the years. But with every great team, things need to be refreshed. And I think maybe him coming back as chairman. I don't think it was the wisest move. I don't think it was the wisest move. I think it would have been, you know. Have him as, a, as an ambassador or whatever, but not to come in and be be, be part of the fabric again in, in decision making. I think he's had he had his time, and um, he stepped out of the firing line. Whether it was always planned or whether he just came back and it was a natural progression, I don't know. But I think that was a bit of a bad move, and that's not. I'm not trying to kick Mr. Lawwell. You know, I've got great respect and admiration for what he's done. He's done great stuff, and I know he's a big Celtic man. Um, so you know, and I'm not kissing people's genuflecting here to, 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 to try and curry favour. That's just what I think. Um, I just think with the best will in the world, it needs a change up above Brendan and not Brendan to be. The thing is, Ian, who are you curry in favour with? We're an independent platform. You know, we're not financed by anybody. And um, yeah, the, the club has been uh, pretty strong in its views, like if uh, a podcast or a platform disagrees with or shares things that are not in keeping with what the club believe, then they'll ban them for press conferences. We have a voice and whatever our opinion is, is never, never aired um, with any kind of agenda or, or uh -huh. any kind of fear 
of what the club might think. Absolutely, it's not a case. Nobody finances a Celtic state of mind. The only people that keep this going are those guys and girls out there who watch it, who come along to our events and who support us. Uh, talking of support, Jonathan Brown is supporting our charity initiative. Any money that comes in through the YouTube channels, you might prefer to pay that way rather than on GoFundMe. Every penny will go to VJ Matini this weekend. What happened to the Luton player today puts football in, into perspective. Yeah, it does. There was a game abandoned um, after 40-odd minutes, I think it was. Tom Lockyer uh, collapsed in the Bournemouth versus Luton game, and I hope that he makes an absolute... Uh, full recovery. You're right. It does put things into perspective. There's no doubt about it, John, Jonathan. Um, and thanks for bringing that to our attention. We've been so caught up um, in the, the two nothing defeat. Celtic um, going on about the, the the financial results and lording it, absolutely lording it. And yeah, there's it's great to be able to run a business properly. There's a complacency there. There's a complacency. There's there's a lack of ambition in that unless we've got all that money in the bank, the same thing might happen to us. There's a culture of belief that that might happen to Celtic. You don't need 70-odd million quid in the bank. You need a good team on the park. We had a guy on the bench today who played second division football in South Korea. Seriously, he's never going to come on and win you that game. It's, it, and it's not just that transfer window there. It's a number of transfer windows. Brendan Rodgers is not blameless. Um, and some people don't think that he's elite either. Uh, Danielle comes in. He's not elite. Well, listen, if it doesn't work out for him this season, a lot more people will agree with you, Daniel. That's for sure. Uh, Chris Pender, the game has moved on from Brendan Rodgers' tactics. Kevin Graham was very, very vocal, actually, this morning about that. Um, and we've also got to bring up your, your comments. Everybody's got a right to make your, your, um, your feelings known. Uh, too scared to call out the manager. Nothing changes. We're not scared. We've got we've got absolutely no paymaster here. Uh, gone yourself. We're an independent broadcast, and um, I'm not satisfied as a Celtic fan getting beat away to Kilmarnock, then at home to Hearts. I'm not satisfied in the slightest at the fact that we've brought in nine players, and I think one of them is contributing to the Celtic's cause and retaining this league title, which it is an absolute battle now. Don't get, don't let any anybody tell you otherwise. Um, we've also got Ryan Clark Duffin throwing 999. Thank you very much. That will go directly to uh, Jamie Tierney. Um, and with any any amount, any amount whatsoever. Uh, the slabbering cabbage, is that me? <laughs> Probably. 199 you're throwing in. And I think uh, what I said at the very beginning, at 7 o'clock this morning when we started streaming for this 24-hour podathon, if you want to call it that, streamathon, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, every single penny will go to Jamie Tierney. Um, and here we go, John, £10. Thank you very much. We're going to have a real live auction as well after the PR interview. We've also got Andrew uh, Andrew Bell. Uh, not much, but every penny counts. You're right. We've talked about community. we talked about coming together. If everybody had 50 pence, a quid, whatever it, it could be that you can spare, it'll all work towards helping the wee guy. 499, Daniel, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to see you in the comments section. Now, we have been actually uh, talking about this game since the back of two. Uh, you could watch it back. I don't think it's going to be watched back that often for enjoyment, Ian. That's for sure. Uh, blow by blow, we seen Celtic uh, unravelling in front of our very eyes. Normally, we just react to it afterwards. Um, and I've got to say, every single one of you that's been involved so far in the charity weekend, a massive thank you. Uh, to every single one of you. We don't look like scoring. No, you're right. Creativity is non-existent at the moment. I'm going to use this probably as my final point uh, before we go to the PR interview, which is happening as a premiere on the YouTube channel. Two things. I am a critic of the Celtic board. I think there's loads of things we could do better. Yeah, we're a brilliantly run club. Though. Yes, we're financially secure. Yeah, we've turned a profit on loads of players over the years. I get it. And... Um, I'll go back to that phone call when the journalist finally got through to Dermot Desmond and the first question he asked him to try and justify whether or not he would give him an interview, how many trophies have Celtic won since I came to the club? I know the success is there for all to see. If you then are disappointed or critical or vocal about us getting beat or losing a trophy or not winning the league, you're called a panty wetter. You're, you know, you're called all sorts and manners of names entitled was the one we got during the pandemic. No, 
It's all about Ian. Wanting Celtic to be the absolute best they can possibly be constantly. And when you see signs that it's not there, and when it's application, that's just not acceptable. There's a bit of that today. Then you call it out. That's what you do. Get Tony Dockery in for the rest of the season, says Damien Moore. Um, you're talking about uh, the man who was at the Dons. He's now at Dundee. What a job he's doing at Dundee. Merry Christmas from France. Hail, hail to you, Space Cowboy. Five pound going to wee Jamie Tierney. This is an effective way to get the money in quickly as well. So thank you very, very much. How have we turned a 34 goal a season striker into a striker who can hardly get a kick? Brendan's system is clearly not working. Darren Glass, five pound thrown into the pot for wee Jamie Tierney. This has been a two and three quarter hour stream. Um, uninterrupted Ian Conroy dialing in from New Zealand at God knows what time of the night. It's probably two in the morning where you are right now. Am I right? It's quarter, quarter past six in the morning now. Quarter past six. Wow. You're going to have to go to your bed after the game. That's what you're going to have to do. Wow. Um, that's commitment for you. Thank you, every single one of you, for getting involved. Um, and I've got to say that uh, so far, this has been a disappointment. But the amount of people who are backing wee Jamie Tierney throughout the disappointment of a 2-0 defeat against Hearts um, is definitely making my my day a little bit better. There's been 2,000 of you on this uh, this particular stream. Uh, that's been the peak live views. 2,000 uh, D67 throws in a fiver as well. Thank you very much, every single one of you. You'll be able to continue to do that. We're going to uh, wrap it up after the Pierre Van Hoydonk, Cadet and Collins interview, which is now happening on the YouTube channel. And we're going to do a, a, an auction for uh, loads of signed Celtic memorabilia. Thank you, everybody, for getting involved. Thank you to Ian Conroy for joining me on a Celtic State of Mind.